eh, might as well do this. Hey everybody, this is Stefan. Uh, I've got I've got uh, I got David Tiberius Lurker here, and oh, uh, we, we just thought about hey, there there we 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 like the Star War. Uh, a lot of people like the Star War. A lot of people don't like the Star War. So we decided, why not? We let, let let's let's talk about this. <laughs> let's talk about Da Mando Lorian. All right, the the Star Wars. Oh man. Okay. Right, the the Mandalorian, the first live action television series um from 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 the world of Star Wars, I guess ever. Uh it it's been on TV, but it was never a series. It almost was. Holiday special could have been a TV show about uh Wookiees forever, but it didn't happen. So, this and, is the and, first and one. there were and there was a Star Wars under, uh, Underworld. Or which the, had the, like yeah, which had like had like fifty episodes written for it. Yeah, uh, but yeah. I don't think they filmed a, a thing. No, they didn't film it. This isn't like Star Wars Detours, where like they have like <laughs> like thirty or something episodes finished. Like yeah, that was just, but but that was that like I mean that that was like a start of how like Mandalorian came to be because they they looked they looked at that and they're like oh, okay we should do something similar to that a grit a more like gritty a, like down on the ground type. Star Wars uh, explorative experience, so to speak. Right. I mean, I it, it, it I think it makes sense from uh, a, a budget a budget perspective anyway, because it, it's expensive to have big old space battles happening in big old places all the time. So if it's if it's on the ground, you know, feet to the floor. Uh, I mean, you can go to planets, but really, it's just it's like a small group doing small things, and then Which you to can, be f- yeah. yeah. Which, which, to be fair, I mean, like, like the the, the both seasons. I mean, they look they they look like move. I mean, they they don't look like. I right. don't know what the world like. I don't. I I've tried looking up like what the budget of the seasons are, and I I, I couldn't find any information. But I'm like, they, these have to cost like over a hundred million each because it's like they put like it's they like there's they put so much like effort and detail into just look like they they like they all look they have like that perfect. Uh, cinematic uh quality to it right well i i I don't think it's quite that high per episode but it's 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 definitely consistent like it doesn't like there's nothing i feel like even the quote-unquote cheapest episodes it's like they look like there's nothing really about it that looks like oh that looks fake or that looks quote-unquote television right yeah no it it throughout the entire series the the mandalorian has definitely looked like it could have been on the big screen and there are certain moments that i kind of wish could have been experienced on a big screen in a group of people uh with a group of people not in a group uh, or it could either way uh group you know like those especially you know the, the the finale it feels like something that would have been really good to see in a large group but i mean that wasn't gonna happen for reasons anyway but (laughs) You know, I don't yep. want to immediately jump to the end, although the ending was super exciting. And, of course, it's the most recent thing I've seen. Um, I haven't really gone back to rewatch everything from, from beginning to end because uh, like when we're recording it, this, because who knows when this will go up, hopefully soon. It, it um, Right, the, la- the finale was two days ago. So. Yeah, it was Reese. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah, the, which I, I yeah, I only I've only seen all the see. I've seen the first season. I've seen a couple episodes of the first season like two times. But yeah, I've only seen the season two episodes once. And I'll go into it a bit later. I'll go into well, we'll go into it a little bit later. Mm-hmm. But it's like yeah, like the, I feel like the only thing uh, th- uh, uh, what's uh, television like about the series season about the series is the pace is like the storytelling and the pacing. But mm-hmm. I don't think that's a bad thing. Like I'll go into why I think that's a, actually a good thing. But it's like, yeah, first, very quickly, uh, when, uh, overall thoughts on the first season, how we oh. felt about it, like, as it was coming out, because I don't think, yeah, because like, we, we did do, yeah, because we did do a uh, talk about The Rise of Sky- Skywalker when that came out. I think we very briefly mentioned about The Mandalorian, but I don't think right. we really talked about it, like, ex- like not, not extensively, but, like, I think we just kind of, like, like what was our experience when it was, as it was first coming out? R- right, yeah, because it, it was still in the first season, I think, I forget... Forget I when... think like the the final episode and then like Rise of Skywalker came out like around like the, they probably was the same week I think. So, the finale had not yet aired. It was the it was just the seven episodes. So it wasn't we didn't get to the finale of season one yet. That was the week. Okay, after. yeah, that's right. Yeah, because like, I, so... I yeah I'm, I'm checking the date. Yeah, that's, it, it was the week before. 
Right. So there, there was um, you know, a lot, a lot going on. There were, there were definitely some highs with with Mandalorian, and there was Rise of Skywalker, which had some highs and and had some lows, and it, it's fine. Uh, but that's not what, <laughs> you know. Well, it, it, it's because. I mean, I don't remember what I said about Rise of Skywalker. I don't want to harp on it too much, but I, I do feel like some of the excitement I had for that movie when it came out waned a little bit. But that that's sort of another discussion. Maybe we'll touch on it later. Yeah, but I think we can touch on it like very briefly, just because I know a lot of talk about the Mandalorian, especially the, the second season, kind of mm-hmm. has that kind of stigma of a lot of people really a lot of people really like star wars but a lot of people really don't like star wars especially modern star wars so the, the like a lot of times there's a thing of like oh if you say you like something mm-hmm. it's kind of like in opposition like you're using it as like a thing of like oh this is why i hate this that like it's like i i love this thing and and, and this thing is a fuck you to the thing i don't like right. and i feel like 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 ju- 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 just to kind of use like as my like just example of like uh, of the of the disney star wars movies I, 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 I legitimately really like... I, I think uh, Force Awakens and Last Jedi are both legitimately great. I think those ones... though Both those movies are instant, are like infinitely rewatchable to me. I think they, they do so much really well of just the, how they execute their characters and the story. It's just so much fun uh, mm-hmm. to go back on so many times. Uh, Rogue One and Solo, I think, are... They have... They have good moments, but are just kind of like they're they're very fl- they're very flawed uh, kind of like features. I, I would say Rogue One is a lot. Rogue One highs are much better than Solo's highs. I would say, mm. and yeah, same with the low. The lows of Solo are a bit lower than the lows of Rogue One. Like they're they're very like they want to do a certain thing, but you can very easily see that there's a lot of meddling behind the scenes that kind of halt them, so to speak. And then Rise of Skywalker again is like though that movie gets like a lot like it's it's one that has like a lot of hate for like some good reasons I think but I but also I I don't I I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people may seem I I think it's just there there are a lot of like really I think bad decisions that kind of hem pamper it a lot but there's also a lot of like legitimately good ideas and good decisions in it so it kind of feels more so like it feels a very like middling uh, experience so to speak for me. Right, um, yeah, uh, I, I guess I guess what I could say is is uh, what, what one of the things I, I think could happen is I know a lot of people are very passionate one way or the other when it comes to the sequel trilogy, and people had a lot of the same feelings when it came to the prequel trilogy, but it was the you know additional material that came out over the years which helped fill it out and make people appreciate thing uh, you know portions more. You know, the, the Clone Wars animated series did a lot to make people appreciate the prequels more. And I wouldn't be surprised if in 10, 15 years after, you know, The Mandalorian is said and done and the other shows, which we'll, we can mention very briefly later, like what could fill out and enrich the story that the sequel trilogy was trying to tell and even correct some of those missteps and fumbles and and i feel like the the first two seasons of the mandalorian have definitely laid some groundwork that can enrich uh and better what we've seen uh in the sequel trilogy uh but yeah it's fun yeah Yeah. it's funny to think that because i i like because i I like you just just by virtue of being on twitter like you see like you'll always come across just star wars threads of people all over like discourse and opinions about star wars and i don't think i've ever come across somebody who openly really likes all three of the movies like i've i see people who really like the first two and don't really like the third one i've seen i see people who like the first and third one and hate the second one i see people that love the second one and don't really care as much as the first and third one right and then it's like it's such a it's it's such a weird like all over the place like i know like with 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 the prequels it was very much a case of like nobody liked one and two but then three had a lot of fans and now nowadays it's more so like it it seems more so like a lot of people are more so open about like oh all like if people love the prequels they do love all three movies although like they they, it is much more uh leaning towards three as just like the top like i I don't see even people who like all the prequels i don't see them putting uh phantom menace or uh attack the clones over revenge of the sith right yeah and i and i mean there 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 are people who 
I mean, there are people who just don't like any of the, the sequel movies either, but... Yeah, well, but, yeah, obvi- yeah right. and obviously, and then there are but, people uh, who just I know, absolutely hate all the prequels. So. Right. I mean, some of that can be generational, uh, and I, I'm sure that also in 10, 15 years there are going to be, you know, kids now who have grown up with the sequel trilogy and who will say, like, you know, those are the best movies, these are the best characters. There are going to be people like that. Um, you know, anyone who wants to argue and say, oh, well, those movies, I can't see how any child could ever be into them. It, I mean, there's nothing so far removed where I, I I think a child would look at it and be bored to tears or that it's not made for kids. It, Star Wars is meant to be for everyone. And I think for the most part, the sequels tried to at least be for everyone, if, even if they didn't end up being for everyone. Um... The, the Mandalorian, I think they're, they're still definitely, you know, trying to appeal to the wider audience, but it does feel like it's, it's just, you know, there are some episodes where it's just slightly more grown up. And I, I, and that I guess is because it's dealing with the underworld and with, um, bounty hunters and, and everything. And right. Okay. You would, you would ask like feelings on the first season, um, uh, the the first season I feel like was was really strong and really like it, it was tight in a way where you have you have these episodes, some of them feel like they're going to be standalone. Some of them like he you know, the Mandalorian shows up, he meets someone, and then he leaves, and that person's left behind. Uh, but then they're able to tie it all together. Um, I know, right? So so names certain names are uh, going to escape me. The uh, the the guy that Nick Nolte voiced. Oh no, Nick Nolte. Oh uh, god. Uh, oh right, because I I'm, weird weird. I uh, I have spoken. I just call him I have spoken. Yes, the yeah, I have spoken guy. Because I, I remember Cooley. Cooley is his name. Cooley. I think that's Cooley? it's probably it's that, that's probably not how you pronounce it. But I'm just seeing it. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it was, it, no, it was, right. was Queel. That, that they pronounce Queel. it like Queel. I remember. Queel. Yeah, because because at the end of the episode where he just screams Queel, Queel. Uh, that makes sense. Yes. Like he was, he was a character that was you know you you meet him early on. He's he's sticking on his planet. It's like oh we've met him, we've fallen in love with him, and then he's left behind. But then he comes back just like um, just like Carl Weathers' character comes back, even though there's there's a through line there of oh we're we're hunting the bounty hunter and also Cara and Cara Dune, mm-hmm. Cara Dune, uh, fake IG eighty eight. That's IG eleven, right? That was the... uh, I believe it's IG. I, I just call him Taika Waititi, but <laughs> right. But yeah, I, that's IG eleven. Right. It, it's interesting because, like, having you know, season two is, is is fresher in my memory. Seasons one and two do kind of feel like different shows, almost in the sense of like it's still a continuation. They definitely say here's chapter one, and we've ended on chapter sixteen, um, but like. The the way that season one worked definitely feels it, it does feel like somebody sat down or like we, we wrote the story. There's a beginning and an end, but it's not really the end. And, and the second season is more like um, a sequel in the sense of here's Star Wars and here's Empire. And one is the sequel to the other, but they still, you know, feel like different movies. They have their own identity, even though it is part of a larger saga. And seasons one and two kind of feel that way, because even just um the the idea of here here's the mandalorian here's din and he there's Jin. is that how it is Jin, Jin, yeah uh, D- din or Jin. Uh, i think they only say they only actually pronounce it like once or twice in the series right and i i don't think they said it at all in the second season it's only in the first very briefly um and, you know because even though the stakes are still there and he and mandal and mando has the child in both and he's he's looking to you know make sure that that grogu ooh that's his name mm-hmm. you know has a <laughs> has somewhere to go it it is um yeah they just they still feel like two very different stories still using the same characters and I, and i like there's a strength there where it's not just here's 100 episodes they're all the same um i mean if if you boil it down to the core of like he lands on a planet He's, he's, you know, trying to help someone to get a piece of information or get a, get some money or do whatever. Like, yeah, like, th- th- that that's still there. But it is, it, both seasons are able to kind of have their own identity. And I think part of it is because uh, the first season is focusing on 
you know, the, the characters that are being created and existing for that, for the show. Um, like, there are things that look similar. IG-11 looks like IG-88, but it's not IG-88. Or, um, you know, especially like, oh, here's the Mandalorian. His armor looks like Boba Fett's, but he's not Boba Fett. And, and you know, for someone who hasn't watched the Clone Wars or dived into the former, you know, the Extant Banded universe or which is Legends, like, they might not know all about, you know, Mandalore and the culture and how there's lots of people who wear these suits. But, like, there, there are familiar elements and even like, oh, here's Tatooine, but we're not running into the people that are from the original movies. The bartender at... Um, you know, the cantina is not the cranky old guy and it's not B. Arthur. It is a droid. <laughs> you have like there's there's some similar places, things that feel Star Wars, but it's not relying on everyone that we've already we, met in the movies. Even though at least at, le- at least for season one, and then right, season, season two, two, season two kind of gets a little funky. But we'll 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 we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right. Well, because it, it was important for season one to establish itself. Because if it had jumped out of the gate, and in season two, Jin uh, is meeting Boba Fett, then that I, that would feel cheaper, right? It it needed to be able to establish itself. We needed to feel. You know, Pedro Pascal find himself in in that role and and meet new places and, and new people. Yeah, because because even the child, oh, it's the same species as Yoda, but it's not Yoda. Like it's just familiar things that look familiar, but it's still new. It it gives us a sense that this is the universe of Star Wars, but we're we're going to be a bit off the beaten path until we are able to then incorporate more familiar things that we've seen. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and I think what overall works structure structurally with the the Mandalorian is that it's kind of like you meant. I, I feel like th- this is like the prime example of why I think episodic television like works. I feel like we take episodic television for granted because mm-hmm. I feel like there's like with even like even down to like animation. As probably animation probably does it overall a bit better, but like with live action television, it's this thing of like especially nowadays every like the the every season is basically like a long like a thirteen episode like a thirteen episode like long like movie essentially. It's like everything connects to each other, so it's you kind of feel like you like every time you're going from one episode to the next, no, no matter if you're watching it weekly or in a binge, they just kind of all blend together because it's like it's one giant story and while it's like yeah like that that journey can be like really great it sometimes kind of feels like oh you're just it's sometimes it feels like it's stretched just for the sake of it it's like a lot of like the individual stories throughout kind of feel like they're lost in lost in the shuffle well Mm -hmm. i think what's great about the mandalorian is that there is an on between both seasons there's an ongoing story it's like oh there's progression from this episode to this episode but no matter if they're doing a one-shot adventure or a plot like progression episode Mm-hmm. every episode feels distinct in both like the plot and like the narrative and what they're doing like like you you could you could mention any episode like oh like the episode the episode with the jawas the episode where he goes to tat the first goes to tatooine the episode where he helps the people uh, in the village uh protect themselves the episode with the prison break uh the episode where uh, taika waititi robot shoots up the whole town uh <laughs> and then in season two you got the episode where he meets fake boba fett uh, the right. episode where he meets real Boba Fett. The episode where they're in the ice cave is like every episode you can like you can just have like a one just you can have like a one uh, Friends level description of the one with or no that, would that be Seinfeld? I forget if it's Friends or Seinfeld that has the one with, but it's like you just you just you can just describe the episode as that and everyone would be like oh I know what episode that is and I feel like that, that's just so I, I I think that's like really enjoyable because it leaves it allows every episode to not only continue on but also be its own self contained story. Right, and I think it helps that they've got like they've got like a top tier. Well, first they had, I mean, they have John Favreau, mm-hmm. uh, like driving the ship, writing pretty much every script, being the showrunner, overlooking everything. I think, and I think this is probably overall his. I think bo- both seasons combined is probably his best project he's ever worked on. Just, just the the amount of like the scope of the story, the way everything's tied together, the way everything goes. Like, I think this is this is probably I think the best thing he's worked on. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I know he helped kicked off, like he kicked off the Marvel universe with Iron Man. But after that first Iron Man, it, it became like, well, it's not his ship, it's um, and, 
And Iron Man was also a case of, like, that film was, like... I mean, they literally had no script, and it was just a, we don't, we have no idea what we're doing, but we're just going to try and figure it out, and they somehow made, like, like the, that, that, that's also another thing, yeah, like, he, he made that work, the, the, he had, like, the guy, because he, he started off, like, doing, like, like, comics, like, small comedy stuff, like, he did, yeah, he, he started working, he word made stuff like Swingers, he did, like, those comedies, he made Elf, then he, like, dabbled in uh, special effects with, with, uh, with the Zathura, Zathura, then he made Iron Man, and then after that, he kind of got swallowed up by Hollywood a bit with Iron Man 2 and Cowboys and Aliens, where, so, he, like, he kind of got screwed over on those projects, so he made Chef basically just to be, like, fuck you guys, that's basically just all Chef is, just a fuck you guys movie. But then he goes back to do Jungle Book, which Jungle Book ends up being really good. But then does Lion King 2019, which is just kind of a... Eh, all right. Eh, you, want, you, you, you figured out how to like do this fancy technology, so you wanted to play with it. But then, hey, he used that fancy technology on The Mandalorian, so it's like, oh, he made it to like really good use, so sure, why not? Right. It It, it definitely feels... If the Lion King is a tech demo, then the Mandalorian is the full project, and mm-hmm. you, because there, there's, there's a, a lot, um, because, because back in the day, one of one of the issues uh, as to why Underworld never came out was was budgetary reasons. Like, how are we going to make fifty, a hundred episodes of a Star Wars TV show and have it look as good as the movies? And that was an issue, and they were finally able to crack that nut with. Uh, the Mandalorian, and uh, like it, it, it definitely looks impressive. Uh, I guess you could you could argue maybe there's there's one or two slightly wonky things that might happen, but I know a lot of people got very excited about uh, the uh, jeans guy in that one episode, who has since been digitally removed. But <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, it because he he's credited as as writer on on most episodes, so it definitely feels like you know Disney Lucasfilm went okay. Where, you know, you're going to have the show, uh, you're going to have Dave Filoni, he'll help, you know, steer you in certain places, make sure things feel like they belong as part of the overall lore, um, which, you know, that can be difficult by itself when you're dealing with any property that's existed for as long as Star Wars has, making it feel like it belongs. That if you watch the original Star Wars and you watch an episode of The Mandalorian, that it all connects and feels like this, this is all the same world, let's have fun there. Um, which and then he yeah. yeah and then he also packs it with like a plus tier directors that like that like g- give each story its own kind of like uh, lens view like like every like each of the episodes like they don't like it doesn't feel like a lot of with TV shows like when you have directors come on and it's like oh they kind of all are following like they don't they, there's not that quote unquote auteur like handle on it but it's like each of them right. you kind of feel you kind of feel like their hands in it like uh rick uh rick Femua, who directed a uh, dope and has done a whole bunch of uh, great projects he did he did two episodes in the first season and i think he did he did one or two episodes like he did he, he did the prison break and he did the uh the second to last episode of season two uh you got like bryce dallas howard who did two episodes in the first and second season who like made her directorial debut you've got uh you got uh taika watiti who of course did what we do in the shadows and thor ragnarok and now thor love and thunder and is now doing his own star wars movie he mm-hmm. does the season one finale and then you bring in uh peyton reed who did who do did this season who's of course did ant-man and ant-man and the wasp Right. Did the two episodes here. I got uh, Carl Weathers directed uh, the episode where he shows up in the second season, and you got like Robert Rodriguez uh, did the one uh, when Boba when Boba Fett came in. So it's like you, he had like it's all it's this like great like thing of talent that are just like oh let here let them do Star let them do Star Wars and like oh give them give them a small like chance to like kind of play around and if it, if they do well then they'll be like oh hey maybe we'll give you like another project or a bigger project where like I mean like that's pretty much how but that's pretty much how Taika Waititi got his uh, full Star Wars movie because they're like hey we like your Thor stuff and we like what you did here so we'll give you another one to do. Right, yeah, because he, yeah, he directed the finale of the first one and uh, yeah. of the first season. It it makes them all feel like mini movies, um, even though they still are able to all you know weave together and it's still you you can see the individual styles, but there's nothing so jarring where it feels like oh one episode was a romantic comedy and now you're watching an '80s action flick. Like there's still it's still yeah the, it, it, things are more defined. But it still somehow works together 
as a whole. And I, it's I, usually the, yeah, it's usually the type of story rather than like a full genre shift. Like I said, the like the like the like the first episode was just kind of like a regular like oh here we're introducing the world we're introducing you to uh, like to, to Mando and like what he does and it's like oh it's just like just a typical bounty hunter series and mm-hmm. then you get the second episode when it's like oh it, it it's like oh the jaw jaw was stole my shit so I got to get it back so you kind of see that kind of sense of communication kind of like uh, bartering and making the deal while also kind of play like showing like the atmosphere and just kind mm-hmm. of the envi- of being stuck in this like mass environment and then also kind of doing some more of like the hinting and the world building so you kind of get like little tips of that and then like the uh the fourth episode when they're like when the when Cardoon first is introduced and you have that like it's like it's basically uh it's basically a a a Clint Eastwood uh type like story where it's like the 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 lone gunman arrives into the town who's being uh who's being like harassed by like the locals so they uh, he has to like team up to help them fight back so that they can uh like say just to save them from like the evil threat and stuff like that it's like the, the that one for that that one's one of my favorites just because it feels the most westerny hmm. it's like it's western but in like a forest scape and then you get yeah then you have like the one that's just oh it's a prison break and you got like the whole you got the old crew back together and they gotta like bust in and break somebody out so it's like yeah you got you get you have these different story tropes but they all kind of follow the same general style right yeah because because one of the strengths of star wars storytelling is that you can apply you know any like most any genre can be put into star wars and work because star wars feels like a living breathing universe so you can have the the prison break and the western and the the mystery and the you know whatever else and definitely when it you know pays homage to the genre films that inspired george lucas in the first place to that you know where star wars came out yeah and 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 the mandalorian is able to to showcase that i because We've got 16, 16 episodes, 16 chapters. I, I can't say that there is an episode that I just out and out didn't like. Um, some are are stronger than others, but I, I don't think any of the episodes are bad. And that um, also speaks testament to the talent behind it. Because any TV show, you know, you would think, oh, maybe there'll be one or two episodes which are kind of, you know, feels clunky or it shouldn't belong and that's probably uh, an issue that suffered more when it comes to network television because oh you need 22 episodes of a show you have to kind of churn them out um you know starting with with streaming and netflix it's like oh let's shrink it down to 13 here's 13 really good episodes and i mean i, I guess shows you know shows on hbo and cinemax it would did the smaller seasons too before streaming but I I know that there were some complaints back when the Marvel Netflix shows existed of like yeah I know I was just I was just about to say yeah the, the biggest complaint about the Marvel like the, the Marvel Netflix series is that every one of them had to be 13 episodes mm-hmm. even though like even when they didn't so it felt like a lot of it there's a lot there was a lot even though even when they were at their best there was a mm-hmm. lot of times when it felt like it was dragging out because oh we need to get to 13 episodes 13 44 minute episodes yeah, and and I I know Defenders was shorter, but I mean every other every other show every season it was thirteen, yeah. and like not every show needs to be locked into that thirteen episode format. And luckily, you know it it feels like they really sat down and figured out okay what is the Mandalorian supposed to be? What what are we trying to express in the story? And and the eight episode format feels like it, it fit just right. Um, and what's also great yeah. about it is that like they 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 don't have a like they're, they're in every single episode has a different runtime. Like they, they they don't feel like they it is they aren't constrained by we have to tell this episode in the in like like with TV like logic like oh it has if it's an hour long it has to be forty four minutes or if it's a thirty minute it has to be twenty two minutes but it's like oh we can have one episode be thirty four minutes we can have one episode be forty minutes we can have one episode be forty five minutes we can have another episode like we like they I think the, yeah the shortest episode is thirty minutes and the longest mm-hmm. episode is fifty minutes so it's like every single episode has a different like runtime because it's like oh they use however lo- however much time they need in the episode they use and they don't feel like they need to drag it out 
just like just because oh we need to fill time it's like oh if we, we told our story and that's it we don't have to like there's no that there's no ads or anything we have to worry about we don't have to worry about like focusing on like following a certain like kind of uh that 40 that 40 to 44 minute like time slot yeah i i probably because like when it, when it comes to netflix it's like oh we we made our our name just showing tv this is what people expect a tv show to be like this is the length this is it let's let's keep doing that and thankfully uh, the mandalorian feels like but i mean yeah it feels like it, it's you it, know it's only as long as it needs to be you know um I'm I'm sure that there are you know scenes that are de- that there, there's deleted scenes or or you know something that maybe didn't work and they threw it out or I I, I don't think they've ever filmed an episode and went oh we need to pad it let's add a couple more scenes but who who knows maybe they have um, well, I did the, well the, there there were something like I know uh, Robert Rodriguez had like a an, an, an interview about the about his episode which is the one when uh, when uh, Grogu gets captured and like they meet Boba Fett for the first time mm-hmm. and it was like I think he said like oh the 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 the, the script Favreau script was like 20 pages long so he's like what like, you're giving me a 20 page script like it's gonna be super short and he's like oh I want you to pad out the action scenes it's like oh I, I gave this like so, like so you can like do some stuff with the action scenes so he's like okay and then the final episode is like just under 30 minutes so it's yeah. like oh they they use as much time as they need to but it's like oh do you like they do like they do as much they need to but don't feel they need to like dra- like pad it out but like with, with an action scene it's like oh you can get away with that but they don't feel the need to drag it out which I think is like pa- padding and dragging I think are two different things right like uh what is it like the i think the weakest episode probably of the series but it isn't the bad episode is the passenger which is the one like with the uh, with with the frog with the where he has to take the frog lady and i feel like that's an episode that's kind of it's it's weakest just in terms of the fact that it's slow but it's also purposely supposed to be slow like you're supposed to feel like that sense of like there's nobody else there it's very slowly taking on like the like the, you get it, it it's one of what like it does what it like it's trying to do like it executes it very well but it's also a thing of like oh it's just on re like it's not one you'd want to like go to on rewatch just because like just because of that slowness but again it's not it's not a super fault of the story because that's like that that, that was their intention right oh you know i i like weird aliens doing weird things and uh she's definitely doing weird things um and grow yeah. who's eating <laughs> yes <laughs> and the the because I, I i i didn't watch i uh I watched some of the episodes late, so, like, I had to, like, catch up a bit later, but then I, like, remember, like, oh, yeah, wasn't there, like, there was, like, like, I was probably not, like, fully real dis- internet discourse, but there was, like, internet discourse of, like, Baby Yoda's eating endangered eggs. Yeah. You know, like, I think people, I think people just having fun, like, they're bored, so just, like, whatever, let's just have stupid fun with this. Let's, let's complain about this. Right. Well, I, I guess, because, because, um, you know, Grogu, the, the child, that, that was the... The, the breakout character in in the first season right because the first episode presents the mandalorian as oh is this going to be just a bounty hunter thing uh maybe he gets you know caught up we in the in the empire and has to get out do like because the the presumption was the mandalorian is going to be a character that we're going to we're going to want to relate and sympathize with him to some degree it would be weird if he is just this cold-hearted bounty hunter who is high-fiving the remnants of the empire so you know we knew that that there was going to be something um you know the, the the moment that they introduced the child baby yoda whatever you want to call him it 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 definitely that sets the tone for the rest of the series and grogu is you know that that's the core that shows mandal shows jen a different way uh of life you know like it it's kind of uh, the the fact that his his um the, the mandalorian sect clan that he's with you know the 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 iron smith woman person whose name i don't remember the armor i think this is the arm the the armor i think it's really, like, she doesn't have a name she's just called the armor I think. oh okay so she, yeah she um it also helps that that they they made that that they made him a puppet. I I, I think the the fact that he's a puppet mm-hmm. very much leads into because it's like yeah he the, the the child the child is fucking adorable and literally everything he does I just can't help but squee at. But most I feel like ninety percent of that is because like it, it is a real tangible thing that they have that they have puppeteers making those movements that he right. he's he, he's basically just a green mog he he's he's a, he's a green mogwai he's basically just Gizmo. <laughs> but he 
can like, <laughs> but he can like move stuff with his mind if he tries really hard. And it, it but again, it's it's that thing of just sometimes you can get away with just cuteness. Like, and I feel like th- there is no there is no shame in getting by with cuteness. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they do. Like it was uh, what, what was the funny the funny story where Werner Herzog found out that they were like, that they were considering replacing him with CG, and he like you 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 would be fucking cowards if you do, you're fucking cowards if you do that. Right. And they're like, okay, guess we won't. Right. Well, because I, I guess the the fear was that maybe it wouldn't come across like the puppet wouldn't quite work but i mean it certainly does and and i i know there are little i'm sh- sure there are things that they touch up. <coughs> they touch yeah, up the the the, fa- the face is easily like the face is obviously like touched up to be cg mm-hmm. but i like that even like cuz i they, they probably like, there are probably like shots and moments where they do like use cg but i like that when they cg he's like per- like they're purposefully animated like worse to look like it's a puppet it's kind of like with the Porgs in uh, Last Jedi, where a lot, uh, most of them were puppets, but a lot of them, like the ones that they replaced with uh, the puff, the the ones that they replaced the puffins over, are obviously CG. But they purposely made the CG look like a pup, like they made it worse to look like a puppet to make it seem more real. And right. I think that I think that that's a really smart thing because it's all about yeah, it's the eye thing. It's like even pe- I mean, yeah, pe- people love mu- I mean, people love Muppets, so it's like we we all have like bought into like we know Muppets aren't real, but we all buy into the Muppets are real because we like they're they're not quote unquote real but we see them and we see them move like and like he's not a real being but we see him move as a being so we see him as real so it's like oh even the the puppet may not move like an alien being but we don't know what alien beings are so just let that alien being move like that and right we, we accept it yeah it it pulled off the same trick that uh yoda did in empire which was you know here is well I mean, he, he's basically a Muppet, you know. A, yeah, it's literally a ba- ba- Nobody said, like, he's not, a, can't be officially a Muppet, but everybody's like, yeah, he counts as a Muppet. He counts alongside the Sesame Street and Fraggle Rocks. He's he's an honorary Muppet. Right, you know, because it's, it's Frank Oz. It's, it's, it, it comes from, you know, the Jim Henson creature. But if, if Yoda didn't work, that movie would have fallen apart because he's so important to the story. And the same thing uh, happens with grogu he's so important to the story that if he didn't work as a as a physical presence that everything else would fall apart around him um and luckily they were able to to pull it off in, through the show um and you know the, you, you get those, those little moments between him and uh i mean him and mando but also just him and the other characters that he runs into there's all he he becomes he's so important even if most of the time he is just sitting there being the world's oldest baby because that's what he is he is that's right he's supposed to be face 50 i can't forget i can't remember it's like every time like every time like i just, i had this like joke any time i had like anytime like somebody like said something to the character i just imagined him saying dude i'm 50 <laughs> fuck off Right. I mean, well, we we know that what, whatever his species is, which hopefully we'll never get the name of, it's they they live to be old. Yoda was old, you know. Yoda if, was like eight eight hundred years in Jedi, I think. I think he might have even been pushing nine hundred. Uh, he's old. He's very old, which which is which is good. Uh, <clears throat> it just no one ever assumed that. Oh, when Yoda was fifty, he was still being baby. But I guess Yoda was still being baby. Yeah, it was nine hundred. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gro- Gro- I mean, Grogu yeah. becomes the the heart of the show, and I like what I was saying. Uh, that's sort of the the opening for for the Mandalorian to grow as a character as well, because he he clearly has a backstory of you know doing things that maybe someone wouldn't be super proud of uh, during the the Prison Break episode when he's reunited with his uh, old crew, and. Um, you know things things uh, turn off. You know a little spicy because he's being, you know he is himself now a target for bounty hunters. Um, you know it's clear like he has some sort of moral code, but we you know exactly what that entails can be a little funny if he's hanging out with 
you know, uh, these characters who seem to not really possess one. Um, yeah, you, you, and we, yeah, you see it in, oh, yeah, because you, you see it in season, a little bit in season one, but then a yeah. lot in season two is that it feels like the, the main theme, I feel like, of the entire series is about, like, the nature of codes and honors and kind of, like, what you stand, like, what, it's about both a between, a, the fight between what you want, what mm-hmm. you believe in, and what you think is right, and what is right. Because that, that's the whole, like, the, the, I mean, the whole thing is, like, about his his raising, like, with his group of Mandalorians is mm-hmm. about, oh, we, we, we never take off our helmets. We're always, like, we're, 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 we are one with our armor. We are one with our people. And then, like, when you get to season two and he meets Mandalorians that don't follow that and they're like, oh, you're one of those guys. And he's like, what the fuck do you mean? It's like, oh, you're, you're, actually, about a, you're actually with a bunch of cultists. And he's like, mm-hmm. Right, which, so which it's is, like, yeah, yeah, which is also kind of weird to think about because uh, I, I know during the, the first season there were there were some Star Wars fans who complained about the fact that were like, oh, why is he so obsessed with wearing his helmet? Why are why does everyone say they can't take it off? Because you know those are people who had watched the Clone Wars and Rebels and the Mandalorians in those shows take off their helmets all the time. It's not a big deal to take it off and show their face. So the fact that this show is like, well, you, uh, you, they never take off their helmet. Uh, it became a sticking point. Like, why it, Why are they just ignoring all this canon? But as the story went on, you learn, you know, they weren't ignoring that canon. They were showing that, you know, man, the, the people of Mandalore, the Mandalorian civilization, is a lot more varied. It's not just one hom- homogenized uh, people. And because and there, there is a tendency in, in science fiction... To have like, oh, here's an alien species, and they're all kind of the same, and that's the way it is. And the, I mean, the main reason being it's easier and cheaper to do that than to try and create an entire society from scratch that has so many different kinds of beliefs and people and, and whatnot. Uh, like maybe if you're lucky, you'll get two. Um, you know, like oh, there are some that are cool and there's some that are bad. Uh, and with the, the the Clone Wars and with Rebels, with uh, and even if you want to incorporate, you know, the the old expanded universe, uh, the the Mandalorian society is definitely something that they have done a lot to build on and expand. And so it it is it is really it's neat that we get to see that and how it is incorporated in, into the, into the larger story. Like, yeah, he will not take his helmet off. They will not do that. But that is not all of Mandalorians. There are so many different kinds of Mandalore people out there. Um, and they all have different forms of what the code is. Some of them are extremists and are focusing on what used to exist thousands of years ago, and some have, you know, changed and, and evolved over over time. And so that's why Bo-Katan can take her helmet off and everything's fine. It's it's not considered weird or wrong. But even then, there's still things that apparently they're holding on to. Where if we want to fast forward, you know, when it, when it comes to the uh, to the dark saber and how that works. But. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we'll, we'll go into that because I think yeah, like by the end of the season, we should just kind of like go into that like fully. But like that—that that, mm-hmm. that is something that's kind of related to where it's like the care where all of the characters kind of have their own kind of codes and morals. Mm-hmm. But then they like there are things like there are, there are things that they do that like they'll stretch it in order to achieve their goals. And like sometimes they'll break their morals. Sometimes they'll stick to it. Like like full like like you meant like. Uh, uh, another example is, uh, yeah, I'll just go into that, like, this really quick. The, the episode right before that with, uh, with, uh, like, Bill Burr. I just keep calling him Bill Burr because that's pretty much what, uh, the Mayfield. Where it's, like, because right. the, the, that episode, like, when, when they take him and they have to break into the Empire thing. And he, he kind of has, like, this, he has, like, the, the, like, the, the speech with him in, mm-hmm. like, in the car. He's, like, oh, like, you're, 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 you're going ahead and, like, you're breaking your code. Like, I mean, he has his, he has his mask covered, but he's, like, oh, you're breaking your code. Like, he's, he's kind of, like, quote, uh, he's, like, making fun of him for that. And then he goes and, like, being, like, oh, Empire, New Republic, Empire, New Republic, it's all the same thing. It's, like, oh, ultimately the people down below get screwed over. And it's just, he talks about all about, like, just wanting to survive survive so to speak but then when you have that confrontation with uh with the uh the the imperial officer and it's just like you realize like it's just that guy is just so like 
so on the other side of it that even he can't even deal with it and just to say fuck it and shoot him in the face right yeah like, it, it, it's it's the, it's these kind of thing it's an interesting like kind of dynamic of like you have like a world and you have a whole bunch of characters that follow very gray like they have very gray morals and like oh they see the world in very like not black and white it's like oh this is a very like there's there is no black and white there's like all shades of gray but then when they look into it and see like certain characters especially pretty much all on the empire side it's like okay no there are like full black and just like these guys are bad and need to go and we just need to like there there is that kind of thing of like i know a lot of stories trying to paint a lot of things of like yeah of not black and white and gray but then there are sometimes where it's just like especially nowadays Mm -hmm. like it it, 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 yeah it, it, it does fit very like hard nowadays of like there are just people that are just pure black like just pure black morality side morality wise Mm -hmm. and it's like and and that's okay like it's it you don't have to worry about making things like at this point i feel like storytellers don't need to worry about making characters or making situations being too one-faced evil because it's like i mean we kind of see that that is that exists in the real world so there's and it and seeing that face first kind of leads those kind of i guess you could call call them centrists to kind of maybe lean over of oh maybe it's maybe i'm not maybe i'm the one who's a bit too cynical so to speak and like gives them some kind of like change of heart or at least change of uh motivation right yeah because i i mean in star wars as a whole i i know there there's definitely you know that the the through line of here's there's the light side and there's the dark side and so at, at first glance it seems very black and white good versus evil and i mean in the first movie it kind of had to be that way because you're throwing uh the audience this completely new and different world but then the subsequent films and then you know the the expanded material allows you to see that really it's not as as simple as that and that's what you get with someone like mayfield where it's like you know he he yeah that he he's been a bad guy he's done bad things the last time we saw him he was clearly doing bad things but like he is a character that went through something terrible and that's how he learned how to survive and very rarely in star wars is there a character that's like strictly super bad um i mean like in 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 the expanded sense um even in the movies, it's like, oh, who's super bad? Uh, the Emperor and Jabba the Hutt are probably like, those are the two super bad guys. Because Darth Vader, who's presented at first as I am evil, personified, the, you know, he gets so many layers added to him with the the subsequent movies. Uh, and then later on, like in, in the books and the comics, there's so many layers to him. And, and well, the... I, well, I would say like the, the quote, like the real, like, I mean, a lot of like the bad guys are like a lot of like the fault, like a lot of, a lot of the Imperial officers. I mean, there's a lot of the Imperial officers like you, like you, you have Tarkin and you have a lot of those guys. It's like, there's kind of a thing of like, oh, they're. They're, they're all like they're all like very they're very snivelly and very like yeah. oh, they just they just care about power and they just want to be in power so they'll do anything nefarious just to be in there and you see you see that a lot nowadays right. so it's like it, it's very like I mean that that was that was what like the original that was what the originals uh, were based off of yeah I, yeah yeah Tar- yeah Tarkin is is definitely yeah um just like yeah. like when I when I think about oh, who are the, who are the main characters who are we seeing like some of those. Imperials end up being, you know, just just cannon fodder uh, in in the movies. Um, and or you have or you have General Hux in the, the sequels. Where you, yeah, he 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 he's another one of those like yeah, those, those like well, just I'll say hashtag fascist inserts. Right, and and they they try to do something with him in the last movie, but it's it's like it's half hearted and it's done in such a way where it's like oh well now we can kill him and move on and it's like eh, okay. Um, and, you know, I I will I I'll go on record again. I feel like I I've said this somewhere on the internet. I don't know on here. I think one of one of one of the biggest issues I have with the sequel trilogy is that after the first two movies, they felt like they had to be locked into trilogy mode because really the story they started telling needed more movies to breathe, and they just it it just wasn't done yeah, but yeah i do i do agree yeah that, that's because I don't, I don't think anybody's like i've never heard that i've never heard that uh 
that uh criticism before but i honestly think that is one of like the better criticisms like yeah the way the first two movies end it felt like oh you need two more movies for this but it felt like they were not only trying to make the end of that trilogy but they tried mm-hmm. to make an end of like the whole saga and it's just kind of like it felt it was it was a thing of like it was they, they bit off two more they could true to like i do think there was probably there was a way to make a third movie just kind of to end that trilogy but just the the ideas that they wanted to explore and yeah it felt it felt like this was like it felt like yeah it felt like this was like part four and that there was a part three that they that they skipped right and i mean i, w- I would even go a step further and say just like how a new hope retroactively became episode four the force awakens probably should not be episode seven you there's story um well there's definitely story that exists between uh return of the jedi and the force awakens and we're watching it right now yeah Uh (laughs) right but but when it it comes to the saga films it it feels like okay we're we're following like we are following the skywalkers we're following you know key events happening and I guess one of the one of the things that feels weird is like if if you if you watch episode three and you watch episode four, you know a lot of things have happened in between, but you don't feel lost, right? You don't feel like you've missed something important. Between six and seven, it feels like you've missed something important because Jedi ends in triumph. The rebels have won. Um, you know, every everything's happy. Sure, there's gonna be Imperial stuff still going on, but it is like we've ended on a high note. Uh, they're gonna keep on going and hopefully, you know, establish a new republic. But in episode seven, it's like you're you're back in sort of the trenches of there are rebels, but they're called the resistance, and there's Imperials, but they're called the First Order, and you don't get the context for what happened in the rest of the galaxy over those over those 30 years aside from like the the lip service of here's the new capital oh it just blew up like um you you don't get movies that show the growth of the new republic or how you know them trying to finish off evil but things growing in the wings you don't you don't get to see you know han and leia have kids you don't get to see uh, luke trying to start up the the uh, academy and i'm not saying you need to see the moments where everything falls apart in the previous movie like that <clears throat> you wouldn't need a seven eight nine where nine ends with the jedi temple on fire and kylo ren or you know ben has become kylo ren and oh oh man everything's terrible uh han and leia aren't you know they, they're having their marital issues you don't, you don't need to see that at the end of a movie prior to the force awakens but you definitely need certain things to fill that in because the the expanded material when it comes to the tv shows when it comes to the novels and the comics there can be important things in there but it it should uh you know it it should exist to to flesh out so if like you watch the movies and say i want to learn more about what's happening in between you go to that material and 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 right now the way the movies exist six and seven six to seven is a very weird gap, a weird jump. It doesn't feel natural going from six to seven in the same way you can go from three to four. So it does feel like we're going to be at a point where you need to watch something like The Mandalorian or some other movie down the line in order for it to feel right when you go from Return of the Jedi and eventually hit The Force Awakens. I, I think I think the whole thing with Star Wars in general is that they're both in terms of the fan, the franchise itself and the fan base is that it's kind of at war of itself of like, do we want to tell, st- do we want to tell stories that like, that comp- that like follow up that completely follow up with each other that always reference each other that bring the characters of we know and love like back together and tie every single thread every single piece of thread across the galaxy all to one central point or do you want to tell like like separate like separate individual stories of characters doing their own things they might be can they might be tangentially connected to what's going on or they might end up having to deal with the aftermath of stuff like going like that was like the whole thing because with force because force awakens was trying to be like it was trying to be like yeah like a lot of people have made the thing of like oh it's just repeating uh new hope again but it was also trying to be like a standalone like the like this this could be somebody's first star wars movie also being a standalone movie of like these are the new characters they're tangentially related to like 
like the original uh, main characters, but they have like their own kind of goals and ideas and they end up kind of intertwining with the main plot that's related to those other characters. So I think, I think that that, uh, the, uh, which uh, the Mandalorian is something I think does the, it all. It, it, it's something that is doing, especially in season two, which is kind of juggling the, uh, like Mando and his journey of like mm-hmm. doing his own thing throughout the galaxy. And you kind of see these, th- these familiar threads of star Wars that we know, uh, kind of intertwining with them and there's kind of these things like they they come in certain ways and come out in certain ways and it's it very much feels at least to me it felt like a tightrope walk of like you could like one wrong move and this just feels like i mean like what a lot of people said about like the the emperor in uh rise of skywalker that that was the thread too far for some people and it feels like that's like something like like this series is very much on that tread wheel walk of like it one wrong move and it could feel too bad and i feel like i think the season finale kind of almost breaks that strand but i think it does enough right that i'm more i'm more so i'm i'm more so holding on to the thread for dear life rather than completely falling off it just cuz of like oh there there are certain things that like i feel like should be done or shouldn't be done and i think that, like the, for the most part mandalorian overall kind of ties everything together while telling its own thing while telling its own story like i think uh like i think the one of the perfect examples is the first episode of the season uh the marshal with uh with Cobb, aka fake boba fett mm-hmm. something i didn't realize is that like until like after going like go looking after is that oh that guy and his whole backstory is from the the chuck wendig aftermath novels right well and what i love yeah yeah, like I have, I had no idea about. It, but what's smart is that they didn't go in. They didn't make that episode like being like, oh, they expected you to have read those novels and know exactly who this guy is. It's like, oh, they they entered. They had him like basically. They introduced him to the audience as if they have never read those books, and even actually showed like the backstory in a flashback. So, so it's like there's that kind of smart thing. Or in uh, the the, Pen- the penultimate episode when uh, Mayfield is talking to the Imperial officer and he like he mentions that he mentioned this battle that he took part in, and that battle is a reference to something from battlefront 2 right and i didn't know about yeah i didn't know about that watching but then look into it I'm like oh see it's those little references that like yeah there's if you're a fan you know about them but they don't actually drag anything down but i will say is that due to the dave filoni of it all like him being it kind of feels very much like comic books in a way where it's like when you're when you're a writer and you're writing like like a marvel or dc writer and you're writing multiple different like series and stuff mm-hmm. or like you go into a new book you'll make references to like your past work and you kind of like write in such a way of like, oh, people like they they're gonna be like, oh, you're expecting like the you're like people who have like the reading it have read your other previous works. Mm-hmm. So it's like uh Shokatano and Bo Katan and a lot like the Darksaber and all those references to Clone Wars and Rebels. It feels I think it feels very much like if you aren't familiar I don't think you have to have watched them, but if you're not familiar with those characters and those series, I think you are gonna be kind of lost with those because they, they do very much feel like they expecting you to at least have a va- like if you have no idea who a Shokatano is, I think you will be kind of lost in that episode. And if you have no idea who Bo Katan is then I think you'll be very lost in like her appearance, like even especially because like I'm I'm not too familiar with a lot of Clone Wars and Rebels, so it's like especially when you get to the, that final episode and you see a lot about like her like morals and like her code and like why she wants a dark saber and how she wants the dark saber and it's kind of that like if you're not familiar with like even like with me I'm just kind of like I I get what they're going for just because like I have a vague idea of who this character is but even still it's just kind of it's slightly confused it's slightly confusing and kind of slightly muddles the story a bit. Uh, Close to me. Oh, well, I mean, I, I, I could see that. Um, but I mean, at, at, at the same time, they, they do try to give at least enough lip service to, uh, you know, when, um, oh, oh no, what, what's his name? Uh, Admiral, uh, Gustav. What, what's his name? Frank, Gus Frank. Yeah. Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon. Yes. Um, you know, he he does give a little lip service as to like, oh, what is this thing in my hand? What is the importance of it to her? Like there there is there is a bit of a info drop there to, to kind of brush people up if they haven't seen the Clone Wars. Uh, the the way that the dark saber is introduced at the end of season one, it it is done in a way where if you're if you're familiar with the with the lore and the animated series, like you get super excited. But if you don't, it is, it is still done in such a way where it's like, well, that's clearly a lightsaber, but there it it's dark. That's strange. Is, is it evil? He's evil. Like it, it's still presenting something that 
is intriguing and interesting because you know the lightsaber is so iconic um if somebody is is working on star wars writing on star wars i i guess there's a safe assumption that anyone watching this is going to be even slightly familiar with the basic concepts of what star wars is they'll know who luke and leia and han and rgd2 and c3po and darth vader and death stars and lightsabers and the force like th- those concepts even if you never watched the movies have so are such so they're so ingrained in popular culture that like you'd, you'd be aware of what those things are so when moff gideon comes out of the broken tie fighter and he's holding a lightsaber but it looks different like there's still enough iconography that you understand what he's holding but you don't know the specific lore behind that specific lightsaber um when 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 more is introduced in season two i i guess that the biggest one might be ahsoka because if you're just completely unfamiliar with the animated shows you're not going to know who she is um she she is a very popular character uh if you are a star wars fan more than likely you'll know who she is to some degree but if somebody's like well i watched the original movies then i watched the ones disney made you're you're not really going to know who she is because but at the same time they don't really like in that show they don't touch on the fact that she um like i i don't think they say outright oh i was the apprentice of anakin skywalker who became darth vader isn't that interesting you know there's still it it it's that particular episode almost feels a bit backdoor piloty which i guess makes sense considering the which end- it is because it is <laughs> right considering the the announcements that they've made recently but um because it, it does feel like the mandalorian is, is launching off and becoming like its own little mini crossover universe but uh we can touch on that in a minute yeah we'll do but, that like at the end yeah. right but um yeah that season two does walk on that fine line because the first season um as far as a normal viewer watching it there aren't any um like iconic main characters from the movies that show up right you yeah yeah like all like pretty much yeah you have like the concept of a mandalorian which general audience would be like oh that's boba fett right you have baby yoda you have a, a robot that kind of looks like a robot from uh that you might have seen in star wars like right in, like the, the i like ig uh they go to tatooine at some point right uh, you, you 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 see you see storm you see stormtroopers right so it's like it's, it's all about like yeah icons rather than icons and resembling stuff rather than actual characters right but then season two starts to actually introduce characters that we know about uh technically um which episode what uh the gunslinger right it does end with boba fett showing up but you don't know it's boba fett until season two yeah and i didn't think it, i did when i saw that i didn't think it was boba fett because uh, i'm like oh the, like yeah no because i, I saw the yeah because because ming na wen dies mm-hmm. and then like a feat comes up to it so i'm like hmm i wonder what that was. i didn't think it was boba fett because like this was before we like we knew uh, that Boba Fett was gonna be if like we were like this was kind of thing like oh we don't know if they're gonna go all the way and like bring back Boba Fett and also think of like I didn't think of like oh how could he like how how could he bring like her back to life and then they find out oh he he gave, he gave her robot parts and I'm like how like that was the biggest question for like like not even how did he survive I'm like how did he give her robot parts right. how does that work I mean. There were people who theorized it was Boba Fett because they they used um, they were analyzing the audio because the sound effect of him walking matched the sound effect of Boba Fett walking. Uh, yeah, so they're like, oh, and, is that supposed to be the same one or not? Yeah, and and see, yeah, and and in in this season, in the episode when uh, in 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 the boat in the uh, yeah in, in the Bo Katan episode, or no, no, not the Bo Katan in the Carl Weathers episode when. Uh, grief when Cara Dune and Grief Karga when they're all like breaking into that when they're bringing to the base and then they see those they see those clone bodies and you can very faintly hear Snoke's theme and it's like oh that's what they're doing right which they they're 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 trying to, to tie all the strings they're together tied in. yeah it's like okay they're try they're trying to clone back the Emperor that's what's going on all right we fig we figured it out already right well I mean you know I know there are a lot of people. Who will go, oh, I can't believe they brought back the Emperor. I can't believe they did cloning. I can't believe, like, that ruins everything. But if you if you want to think about Star Wars in the grander sense, one of the very first things that's dropped into the first movie 
is a reference about the Clone Wars. And so it's like, oh, clones seem to be a a big deal, you know, good or bad. Boba Fett's a clone. Boba Fett's a clone, basically. Right. Although at the time he wasn't. Um, yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, that 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 is, that is a funny that that I that I do like that that kind of like that that, that kind of nod. I like that, 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 that that's like a nod that kind of works, especially because I don't think I've heard like that in, like in, at least in the Star Wars media I've heard is like when when uh, the other Mandalorian is talking with Boba Fett and she's like, "Oh, I've heard your voice so many times. I've heard your voice so many times. I know what you are." Right. I mean, because that makes sense. She was in the Clone Wars. She was, you know, she she. She did a lot. Of course, she was going to be around uh, the clone troopers, it, and, and yeah, yeah, clone, clones aren't the problem. And like, right. even the emperor coming back, I don't think is problem. It's just the way that was the way like it was executed, like because it, it was executed very half-assed in Rise of Skywalker. Because I mean, like nobody said it, but it's like people have theorized that that was all added in like very, very last minute. So it's like, and you can, you can kind of see, like, you can kind of like see like, yeah, you can understand how like, oh, the emperor wasn't actually in the movie until very, very late in the game after they were already filming. So it's like, you can see like why, like if they had like, it's not even a case of like, oh, plan ahead. It's just, if they like went to like started making the movie with that in mind, it's like, I think it, it probably would have been executed a lot better. Like, right. Especially cause I know, I think even the fact that he's a clone, like that, I mean, that, that's never actually mentioned in the movie. That's like, I think in. In, in, in the novel adaptation, they call him a clone. Yeah, I mean, either way, like if we want to look at, at Star Wars as a whole, um, or or even like the the original expanded universe, the Dark Empire comics, playing with the idea of a cloned emperor. Even if you're not happy with Rise of Skywalker and the fact that he was cloned and back to life and he's behind everything, the idea of the remnants of the Empire trying to use cloning technology to resurrect the Emperor to some degree makes sense even if i you know the ideal ending would be they it never works they always get stopped before they can clone him uh it still makes sense that they would try to do that 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 it it just is something that's there and i'm sure the emperor would have had contingency plans to maybe try to get himself cloned maybe not clone himself and then hide out on a planet that nobody can get to so he can clone himself so that his (laughs) His, his other clone that's younger can end up having a kid, so it's like, it's his granddaughter, but it's also his yeah. daughter, but it's also like, it, whatever. It, it, it gets... It, it. And, um, <laughs> and and the, the, they say Grogu has a high M count. Yes, ha. they don't... They... <laughs> they, they, they don't say it, but they, they found... I, I kind of have to give them props for that, that they found a way to, like, psych like it's Because, I mean, like, the whole thing is, like, the that I've, I've seen a lot of people say about this, like, the uh like even even the sea like this a lot of i know a lot of people who are like real fans of the prequel trilogy mm-hmm. don't like that the sequel trilogy kind of goes around a lot of stuff in the prequels even though a lot, a lot of people didn't like a lot of that stuff but like this series has been like trying to tie in every single piece of media together so like they even found a way to like oh we're gonna have this little nod in like even the thing that i think even probably like prequel people don't like they're like oh let's just let's just throw this in just for the hell of it say the word say midi chlorians <laughs> Let's do it. I want to hear it. <laughs> just say so. I, I, I legit. I honestly. I, I want them to say it just to hear what the like what the response is. Like, are people gonna backlash it? Are people gonna now say it was a good thing all along? It's like I want to. I want them. I just yeah, go for it just so I can see the discourse. Right. Well. Um. Uh, so I, I don't uh, remember speak, the yeah. exact quote, but I will say that that um. Uh, uh Dave Filoni. You know, because he he worked with George Lucas. That he he has gone on record to talk about the midichlorians, and he he has some interesting ideas as to, you you know, it, that it, it's a thing where hey, if you have these the this this microbe present in your body, like yeah, maybe you are more uh, naturally inclined, but that doesn't mean that just because you have them that you're automatically the best at the force, and that someone who has less can be better at it and and that it, it it depends on a lot of factors it's just one of those things and and i think you know even george lucas it you know was asked about it once and he said mm, maybe it was wrong or that the jedi were wrong and and the idea of like here is science and they become over reliant on science when they are meant to be spiritual you know a, a spiritual group and that the force is more than just boiled down like the the idea of the midichlorians presented in, in episode one doesn't mean that that's that's the way it has to be through everything 
people can be wrong people can have different interpretations and and like so it 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 doesn't need to be as dirty a word as people like to make it yeah i, I also think it's just the name i think i think the the name is just i feel like the explanation isn't that bad it's like, i think that the name is just kind of stupid <laughs> I, I feel like if it had a different name or they mm-hmm. didn't give it a name like like it would have never been a thing yeah I, I did uh in the beginning of the first episode when they were like uh like when when like when 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 it was like oh the the town is being overrun by a beast and I'm like if it's the fucking sarlacc I swear to God because I was like they're gonna make it they're gonna fight the sarlacc isn't it it's gonna be moving around somehow but then it wasn't it was just a giant dragon so I'm like okay oh uh, yes the great good. dragon which has been sitting there since the beginning because in the original Star Wars you see a skeleton of a great dragon um but you they've never shown it. Like, you know, like that in, in live action. I think, um, I mean, it's definitely been in comics. Um, I think it w- it was something that you could, um, in, in the old Star Wars Galaxies MMO that doesn't exist anymore, uh, that, that the pearl that the Jawas get was something that you could get in that game. Um, that, yeah, that, 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 that was, I think, one of my, I think that's, that's probably my top, I think that's probably like my th- third or something favorite episode of like the entire series just because i kind of like i mean like just like that and the that and like the the one the one where he's helping the town uh, protect like because those are the two most uh like westerny type episodes and i'm a sucker for those so like that okay. one's one of my favorites just because i feel like i feel like it's just a simple story of like yeah like going into the town like meeting meeting the guy learning about the past i love like the kind of like the, the way like they interact with like the the, the, way, the way they make the deals with the with the sand like the making the deals with the sand people and like the interact, like the the conversation with them, how like the, the both the towns and like their group, they have to get them to work together. It's like I feel like the, 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 that's something in Star Wars where they use like iconography and like stuff in Star Wars, but actually tell like a new like interesting story about. It. It's like oh, just the regular people that live in this like backward ass town in Tatooine that have to work together with because we've we've like so much that like I mean the most thing we know of the Sand People are like are just sad. Like I mean the the most like the most famous thing the Sand we know the Sand People did is the whole everything in uh, uh episode two and it's like we we just kind of know about them as like savages so, like to see seeing them humanized like like this is something that that's like re- like really important and something that like helps that helps both like the story stand out and also just like the world ex- ex- expands like the, the universe greatly right it, it, it's where you learn you should actually call them tuscan raiders it's uh that's that's the yeah. <laughs> Oops, don't I'm be sorry. racist i'm sorry i'm racist i'm right i'm sorry sorry you... yeah oh yeah and, uh, I, I, and, and like and also with the like the like doing like the like in, integrating the sign language into that I thought, I thought that was really great yes so, and and, it, and it's a and it's a little it's it's a fun detail I like but I like that once they start fighting the dragon the 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 aspect ratio changes it changes from like the widescreen to uh, I don't know like the exact like numbers but like they change the aspect ratio during that fight because it's like oh the pretend like oh we want now you're watching it in IMAX you're watching this big battle that takes up the entire screen oh and then it goes back to the regular uh widescreen format I'm like oh that's kind of cute john favreau it's it, it i like it as, te- as a technical nerd i like that oh that's like brother bear brother bear does that the animated movie. <laughs> i was gonna say like uh, the Nolan Batman movies are, yeah, because it's like the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises do that all the time. And every time it switches to an IMAX shot, it like it, like the the format goes back and forth so much. Oh, uh, no! And in, in Brother Bear, when he becomes a bear, it gets wider for some reason. Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, well, I just mean like I just, I just wouldn't think of Brother Bear of all things. Uh, it's Disney. It ties in. <laughs> Uh, I, I will. Say, I think my favorite episode overall is probably the the Jedi, the Ashoka one, and I, I think that's it's more so like not just because of like the information you get in the story, mm-hmm. but I, I think it's just it's visual. I think it's visually the most stunning episode of the entire series. It's just the colors, the way the shots are look, like the the the, the swamp area, like the beginning, of, like the beginning of the episode when it's like she she's fighting all the people and like she's cover, she's like the, all the fog and the shadows like breaking. You just see the lightsabers you get the shots of like the town like the way the town is uh said like they're the end where she when she's fighting uh right when she's fighting like the 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 the, the imperial i think it's the imperial woman or whoever like just like the i i don't even, i don't remember her name just the, the one that she really wants to kill and fight right and it's like yeah you get i i, yeah, I think that that's like the the best directed and best looking episode and that was dave filoni like yeah, he did especially because he's not like super like 
uh, tight with uh, live action. So it's like I think he didn't he did a super excellent job uh, with right. that one. Well, he he is very protective of uh, Ahsoka Tano and Ahsoka. Yeah, like yeah. it makes sense. Like that's the only one that he, he rival the the, the, the Rick the Rick Femua one he wrote, and the yeah the Fa- the Filoni episode he wrote, and then all the rest are Favreau. Yeah, because uh, because if you want to use Ahsoka to any degree, you have to talk to him pretty much like you can't just be like oh i'm gonna use her it's like you, you need to converse with feloni um because i i think at this point he's the only one who knows how her story ends we i i mean i would say we don't even uh i know some people are like oh she must have been dead by episode nine but i mean i'd argue that just because you hear her voice in the collage of jedi voices doesn't mean that she's dead um, stranger I mean, like, well, thing. How, how old? Yeah, how old would she be? I mean, because that, that's like I mean, that, I mean, that, she'd that, be like, old, yeah. older, but it, it, I don't think she wouldn't have I think died. It would be, from I think it would be. It would be easier that it would be easier that she died just because the fact that oh, everybody else that talks to Ray died except for her. That would be just a yeah. that'd be a weird. But like, I mean, thing. We, it's like, we're yeah. also you know in the Mandalorian that episode. It's called the Jedi. She seems to be presenting herself as a Jedi, but technically, isn't she not? a jedi well, anymore well the, well, the, well the thing is it's called the jedi because this is all i mean a lot of the episode titles are kind of like from they're kind of like like mission logs from the mandalorian's point of view it's like it's called the jedi because he thinks of like he doesn't know who jedi are so it's like oh the, every, everybody's saying oh she's a jedi so i'm like he's like oh you, you can use the force you have force powers you use lightsaber you're a jedi even though she doesn't consider herself a jedi it's like that's why i think that's why it's called like i, I yeah. think that that that, that that, that's kind of like the notion of like the episode i mean she also doesn't correct him and say actually i am no jedi because he says oh you know he needs a jedi you know grogu needs a jedi he needs to be trained and she's like well like i cannot train him she doesn't say i can't train him because i'm not a jedi she says i can't train him because there's much fear in him and you know she's referencing what happened with darth vader but she's not explicitly saying oh yeah i was trained under the sky you might know him his name's darth vader remember that time he like killed a bunch of people and was the terror of the galaxy? Lol. Um, we, we, it's like, I don't know fucking anything. <laughs> it does make me wonder if at that point, if she still thinks of herself as not being a Jedi, or if something has happened in between where she's met Luke and talked to Luke, and maybe she considers herself a Jedi now because, you know, the order that she was a part of doesn't exist, and that the new Jedi presumably will have a fresh start, even if things go bad by the time we hit episode seven uh but but yeah like i i I do wonder exactly what's going on there and i mean hopefully we'll find out later in in other things but yeah they're almost certainly gonna delve into that later in her series but at least from like from my like from my like perspective like just looking at the story it seems like a big case of like it's not like she's a Jedi, but it's more like she's disillusioned. She's di- she's disillusioned from like the nature of the Jedi. It's like oh, in in like Jedi, she probably like she she follows the quote unquote Jedi religion, but she's not like a part of any Jedi group. Like it's probably a case of like she's probably heard about like the stuff. Like I I I, I, don't, I don't think she's met Luke. It's possible she could have met Luke by now, but I don't think she's actually met Luke. She probably knows of Luke and what he's doing, so she's probably like oh, I'll kind of like hear, I'll observe him, I'll kind of hear about him from the distance and kind of. See like oh maybe in the future if i think if i think things are going well i'll go and check up on him it's like that kind of i that, that's, at least that, that's that's what i think might be going i mean at, at the beginning maybe like oh right after the death star 2's exploded i could see her being distant but i i don't know like by the time of this show it's been at least it's been what five years yeah it's been Some... five years which i mean it, it's not that's not that long especially because she's had like her own fish to fry i think it's a case of like oh i don't need to like i'm not so connected to the jedi anymore that i feel like i have to go running it's like i'm gonna do my own thing and when i feel the time is right i'll come crawling back I, I would be curious, because I, I, I feel like they would have to meet at some point, if only because of the, you know, the link they have, which is Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. And, so. also, and also Thrawn, and Thrawn. Well, just like, ooh, I mean, boy, Thrawn's coming. Well, Luke doesn't know Thrawn <laughs> at this point. Well, I just mean, like, the fact that, oh, they, they reference Thrawn, and so it's like, oh, the Thrawn is coming. They do, yes, that's, yep. that's what I'm excited, because, uh... Yep. My my guess is that you know when when uh, all you know these shows are going to interlock that Thrawn is probably going to be the big bad that's connected to all 
the the upcoming shows set in this time period. That's what it feels like to me because Thrawn is big. It's not, you know, Moff Gideon. He's just a Moff. Tarkin, or not Tarkin. Um, oh, I mean Tarkin's Grand Moff, but 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 you know he's Grand Admiral Thrawn. Like that. That's that's important. It's big. It's like there's a reason everyone loves that character. That there's a reason that he was like the first thing that they pulled back, pulled out of of Legends and threw back into the main canon. There's something, you know, very special and important with him. I do hope that when they put in Thrawn, I hope that they actually like it's. I hope I I don't want them to do a thing like ashoka and especially if they do make him as important as like it's seen like as you're saying i hope they actually do kind of like give the time to kind of like flesh out the character for people who aren't as familiar with thrawn because i feel like yeah there, there's so there is so much like thrawn material in like novels and like a little bit in rebels and stuff like that but it's like i feel like there's there's not enough like in terms of like uh, media that i think that there probably deserves to be like be like i don't want them just kind of throw in thrawn and be like oh now he's the big bad but you have to have seen like you have to have seen and read all of this other Thrawn stuff for to kind of like fully get it. It's like at least like show and like even if it's just a thing of like oh like give him an episode or two just to show his entire backstory and then you can kind of go in because I feel like if if to give the, giving the audience that kind of uh, context I think would help make him like stand out greatly as like a character rather than as a a piece in a puzzle. So right. To speak. Well, I I mean in, in the in the novels that he was in, uh, the novel he was introduced in Heir to the Empire and that trilogy. Um, I'm trying to remember how much of his backstory was actually explained in those books because, well, I wouldn't say backstory, but more so just kind of like the character work, like I like see seeing what he was doing during that time period, like like kind of like, kind of like the Cobb but ep- like kind of like the Cobb episode where you got to see that flashback of him getting Boba Fett's armor and like taking back right. his town, like like doing something like that, like showing showing those scenes from the novels, right? And, well, like, he. Yeah, he, he. I would be surprised if he was a one and done. Like, here's an episode and he's gone. He, he's, he's someone that would be, I'm sure, given a, a fair amount of, of screen time. Uh, and, and I mean, I wouldn't want them to just re-explain everything that's in those books. Because, um, like, the books that are canon, there was a... Right, okay, I'm getting confused. But they, right, there's the, the trilogy that ended somewhat recently, which is him uh, as part of the Empire, and they're just starting a new trilogy written by Timothy Zahn that takes place uh, prior. So about how he, he ends, uh, about his origins, how he leaves the unknown regions, like all, all of that fun stuff. So we, we get, I, I guess when all said and done, uh, Zahn will have written those are th- three trilogies, but the, the first trilogy he wrote isn't canon, or the duology yeah. isn't canon. The, there's a lot of thrown out there, but be, because that character has so much going on and even the, the way that he acts and performs is different than other villains in the series they they would need to definitely focus and show like why this character in particular can be such a foreboding presence um yeah that's why i feel like like they need to like a lot of that context from those novels i feel like they need to try and like like even if they yeah they just spend a whole episode that's just like an adaptation of even just one of those novels just to be like this is what he was doing during that time just so you give you have a context of who this guy is and what exactly he's doing rather than just kind of throwing him throwing him in and expecting you to know like oh you, like when he finally shows up and it's like oh they expect you to know who he is and how he acts and like what kind of a care what kind of a being like what what makes him a different villain from all yeah because it's like yeah most of my experience of thrawn is like yeah i saw some of the stuff in rebels i read the i read the comic book because i believe i I haven't read any of the novels, but I've read the 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 first like the first like the, the Star Wars Thrawn book, and I forget if that's like an adaptation of any of the books or that's just another story. Um, the the comic is an adaptation of the first uh, in canon novel, uh, okay, just, yeah. which is just called Thrawn. I mean, I, I I don't think I'd want an episode that's a direct adaptation, but I would, I I would be, I I wouldn't mind like certain things being dropped in and adapted and shown off it's just you have to do it in a way because you know star wars if we want to get back into like the big picture um star wars does do a lot of things where you're dropped in and there's a character and you get the sense they're important but you're not you know doused in a bunch of backstory and flashbacks and what have you uh you know even in the original trilogy there's like you know you have vague rumblings 
of Bo uh, of no, um, of of Jabba the Hutt, right? It's like, oh, Han's on the run from Jabba, and oh, I need to pay off my debt because Jabba's gonna get me. And then you see Jabba, but you don't. You're not like told how did he become a crime boss? How did he rise in the ranks? Why is he on Tatooine? Why does this? Why does that? You don't get that stuff because you don't really need that stuff in the in the original trilogy you didn't need to know how the emperor seduced vader you just knew it happened um the, the yeah but to be fair at, at least in like in because in that they're, they're also very different like time because we i mean we're in the era of like like of cinematic universes and adaptations of comic books and stuff like that. So it is a very, like, in the original trilogy, when you could have, like, those kind of hints towards other stuff, and it's like, oh, because other material doesn't actually exist. Like, that's just that's just kind of basic storytelling. It's like, oh, there's this hint of this character. Who is he? We don't know, because, oh, the, the writers don't even know yet. They're still, like, writing it out. But then it's like, oh, like, this mention of Admiral Thrawn, it's not just supposed to be of, oh, there's, this, like, there's going to be, like, this character named Thrawn appearing. It's like, oh, it's supposed to be oh if you're a star wars fan you know who thrawn is you have all of these books and uh tv series of appearance so you're like oh i know this character so it's like this it's very much that that's much more of a wink in the audience rather than kind of like a direct like kind of story kind of hint like like how jabba was i think that and i think that, that that's kind of like just the nature of it's the nature of the beast nowadays of like you're you're trying to work around of like you want you telling this story while trying to like not be too referential because it's like again like there's a potential of like you're just you're, you're just going down a checklist of like here's this character here's this character like there, there's a potential you could go too far and it's like it's very much towing that line and it's like i think if they, they they do it good enough that again it doesn't completely fall off the rails right but i mean star wars doesn't have to do everything like the, the same that other properties like marvel are doing i i, I think part of the joy is what what was so enticing about Star Wars when it first came out is that you are dropped into a universe where there is backstory, but you don't know it all. That there are, you know, it, it's that living, breathing universe. And just the fact that, you know, it, it, the Star Wars is represented as Episode Four, and even later, like when the clone when the Clone Wars CG show began, you know, later on they revealed, oh well, some of these episodes are actually are actually out of order, and this is the the you know canonical you know, from beginning to end, how to watch it. But when they were being released, there are certain things that are out of order. And, and, I, and I think that part of part of the joy uh, of Star Wars is to some sometimes you are thrown into a situation and you don't know all the backstory or everything that's going on. And then either you hunt and find it yourself or the way that the story is told, those pieces are revealed later that the earlier parts of the story are to are told after the later parts of the story and that is some some of the more in, that's what, one of the things that makes star wars interesting to me it, it, it's just like going into the movie theater and you're seeing chapter 12 of a 20 chapter serial and you haven't seen the other parts but but that particular chapter just engages you and that's what george lucas was doing and and that even kind of evokes into like how I, I get excited about comic books where you're, you're picking up a comic and, and you're reading this story, but there are certain things that are referencing back and it's like, then you are personally going and hunting and finding, you know, older stuff or different titles or things that kind of all tie together. And, and so it, it, there's something about Star Wars and the, the way that the story has been told and the way that it has been presented and the way they jump around that makes it unique compared to other franchises where it's very much, we're starting from here. There's a story. That we've, we went to the end. And maybe if we want more money, we'll make a prequel series to copy Star Wars. But it's, it might not feel as needed as it should be. I think I think one of my one of my examples uh, I was thinking of by about is is, is about Bob, it, it, Boba Fett's probably like my like one of my like main examples because I was like when 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 I when when they announced that oh Tamir Morrison was gonna be in it and then you see him at the end of the first episode and I'm like. Uh, Boba Fett is coming, and I'm like, I know they're putting Boba Fett in because people know who Boba Fett is, and I'm like, Boba. you don't really need like, what <laughs> Boba Fett? What? Where Boba? Boba? <gasps> where? 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 <laughs> it's good. And it's it's just a thing of like, yeah, because we 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 had a whole season basically creating a a not Boba Fett and like making it especially because I mean. The, the the running gag is that oh he he he's basically just an armor but he doesn't really have like a distinct character and he and he, he falls in a hole and dies 
So then there's like the whole thing of like, oh, when we introduced, we like the, the first season spent the whole like time creating this new character that basically stole, like the, they basically just stole his armor and made this whole new character that everybody fell in love with. So you're just bringing the old dude back and I'm like, all right, let's see where this is goes. And then the episode where they bring him in, I'm like, okay, they're actually doing something with him. It's like, oh, they, they I think what's, what's cool is that they introduce him like, I mean, like, not not with his helm. Like, cause he doesn't already have, like, his helmet. Like, you see him, like, helmetless. So you can see him, like, oh, as his own character, so to speak. And you see him, like, doing badass things with his crazy death stick before he eventually gets his helmet and his armor back. Mm-hmm. But then he also he still takes it off. He can first... He, he has this new sense of honor. Like, maybe there was some... Because I never really thought about this in any other Boba Fett ex- uh, appearance. Is that this kind of sense of honor is like, oh, I, I said... That, like, you I went after um, Grogu gets taken. He's like, "Oh, I said I'll take my armor, and the kid will be protected. So I'm gonna help you get it back." And it's like, "Huh, that's a side of that's a side of the character. Like I would never expect." And I'm like, "Okay, I want to see where this goes." It's like it's not just, "Oh, he's an asshole. He takes his suit back and then he leaves." He's like, "Oh, the he I get, he also has his own kind of like set of codes and set of morals." And it's like, "Oh, that's something." It's like, "Oh, maybe there's something new." And th- th- that's also something I'm like, "Oh yeah, you remember that? Oh, th- this character is kind of mostly a blank slate, so you can kind of do a lot of like more interesting stuff with him." So it's like, "Okay, I'm interested to see what kind of like." compelling narrative piece they could uh pull out of him which we'll get into in a little bit uh down the line right probably soon probably soon because we we only have like a couple more things to talk about really. right but yeah i, I mean because because when it comes to to boba fett i know um in the old expanded universe there there was you know a lot of material written about him but that material was written without the knowledge of the prequels so there were definitely things written that made no sense after a point because those writers didn't know that he was a clone of Jango Fett and that 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 was the template used for the clone troopers and you know every everything there um and and there are things that we that are touched upon in the Clone Wars series but that is a younger Boba Fett you know he's still essentially a kid we uh the the modern adult Boba Fett was it's pretty much a blank slate, and so there's. there's, yeah. there's starting I don't to... even think there's many appearances of adult Boba Fett in other material. Like there, in the very first arc of the Marvel comic, mm-hmm. it's like uh, Vader. Vader hires him to find out who Luke Skywalker is. So like, there's a thing where like where Luke's at uh, Obi Wan's home, and him and mm-hmm. him and uh, him and Luke have like a little scrap before he leaves, and he's like, "Oh yeah, uh, I found his name. His name's Skywalker," and he's like, "I'll I'll leave. You better pay me." All right. That, oh man! I don't. I don't think there's. A, yeah, I don't think there's any novels. I don't think he appeared. I think there. There's like a because I think it was last year they had like these like series of one shots, and I think Boba Fett appears in one of those one shots. But other than that, I can't think of any. I don't think he's in any of the novels. Right. Uh, they have been. I, he's not. In, yeah. They have been very um, hands off when it comes to Boba Fett. Uh, I think partly because um, originally. Um, at at the Star Wars celebration, they they announced. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the the jo- the Jack is Josh Trank. Yes, was gonna Josh work Trank on was a going Fett to make a, a Boba Fett movie, and there were rumors, uh, like apparently it was supposed to be shown off the same time Rogue One was, but that didn't happen. And I remember hearing a, a rumor or two that it was supposed to tie into the time period of Solo, and that there was even the idea of a scene that would happen in both movies from from both perspectives of I, I heard a i heard a rumor that bo- that the movie was supposed to be like mm-hmm. the lion king one and a half where it was like the events of the trilogy from boba fett's point of view mm. like that that was that like there was like they were going to use like they were like they were playing around with technology so they could insert boba fett and these new characters into like the old scene so you'd see like the footage of like you'd see like the old like original Star Wars footage, and you'd see like Boba, like the, the the scene when when he's when he's there with uh in that in that added scene, like when when Jabba's like talking to Han and like the, the, and oh, he's yeah. there, you like see it from his perspective, so you kind of see it from like different angles. So it's like it, 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 I feel like that would have been like a bit too like it's a it's a funny idea, but I feel like it would be a bit too like like a serious idea. I think it would just be too funny to view it as like a serious movie. But I think yeah, it, it is smart that yeah, this, he's such a blank slate that now it's like oh, now Filoni or and Favreau and every anybody else who's working on it can do, like they can do whatever they want. Right, and and like the uh, the, the the Cobb Van stuff that was in aftermath, that was sort of the the teasing of him. I wonder what happened, but 
I had read that book, so when they introduced that character in the season two premiere, I was like, oh, I know that. I think I know that. I had to go back to the book because it had been so long, and I was like, oh, yeah, he is in there. But there was some... It, it was clear that Disney wasn't going to keep Boba Fett dead. I know Lucas was like, no, he's he's dead. It's fine. Uh, even though there was all this expanded universe stuff about him. But it, it was a, a, a thing where... Uh, it's, it's, it's because he's a popular character. People know him. Yeah, like, like there was no way not, he was going to... They're going to want to find a way to bring him back no matter, like in some way. Right, there was no way he was going to stay dead. And like I'm, I'm glad they that he is back because they were... And I'm glad that he did something in that episode. Because one of the things is like, oh yeah, he gets Han. He stands around. He gets hit and he falls into a hole. Like the fact that he is, he's fighting and shown as capable even before he gets his armor back. And like it, it's it's basically, it, it is one of those pieces of fan service of, hey, remember Boba Fett? He, he is like, we're going to show you, we're going to show you him being as cool as you thought he was, even though you never saw it. And I think that that's something, it, it's fun. I'm glad it's there. You know, there, there are moments where, where the fan service can be okay. But I mean, I'm also, I, I find it interesting that he does disappear in the in the last episode and there was probably a big reason for, for one that. Yeah, yeah for, for one, one very yeah, important I didn't, reason. yeah <laughs> uh but yeah so, so so season two is where it's like slowly introducing all these little elements um that tie it into the to the grander star wars story because even you know like the weird one-offs of, of the clone wars animated show or you know like rebel starts off where these characters seem disconnected from from the overall saga you 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 get the threads that tie it in so that they they see one side or one sliver of that grander overarching story that everyone is familiar with and so like i, w- I was expecting it to happen at some point in in the mandalorian show but to be honest when i was watching the first season i thought that maybe they wouldn't even get around to boba fett until the season two finale and then maybe they would do more so I'm I'm glad they didn't go all in and have Boba Fett in the entire season. Um, you know he he is used sparingly but importantly, and uh, and then they also like you know tie in things and even elements of like uh, when when they bring back Mister Bill uh, Bill Burr, where it's like even the one off episodes from season one are going to come back and tie in when it says chapter sixteen. It's like. I, I said before, season one and two do feel like, you know, like movie one and movie two. There's, there's, they have their own identities. One's clearly a sequel. But at the same time, it does manage to be 16 chapters of, of a story. It it definitely feels like, well, I, I guess it's meant to feel like a book. And and that it, it, it pulls off a lot of the ways that it ties things together. Um, but I guess we could... We could uh, I know. I know. We've yeah. we've we've jumped around. It hasn't just been about the Mandalorian, but I mean, I guess I guess we should talk a bit about the finale because the I mean the finale ties everything together and 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 the, yeah. the thing and for and uh, well first uh, dubstep Terminators. Mm-hmm. I don't know why there's there's, there's they just put for first off that that music is fucking awesome. I didn't think dubstep like st- like weird dubstep sci-fi Star Wars like, <laughs> like if, if if you told somebody like that was in a thing they'd probably be like oh it sounds fucking terrible but it's, <laughs> it just sounds so cool somehow like well yeah I I, I didn't I even mention this but L- L- Ludwig Gordonson's uh, whole soundtrack of the Mandalorian is so amazing it is so surprisingly amazing like just when like that that like the first time I watched the, like the series and that first episode and you have that theme with the whistle and you just get that you get that like that 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 that, that it perfectly captured sp- like sp- if I say like how would you describe space western like that like it used to be firefly for solo like the firefly theme but now it's like when like that theme is like like the perfect uh, uh, explanation of like a space western of just cap- capturing this semblance of it feels Star Wars but it also feels very different and feels like, like yeah something yeah like it it because it, it's always like even the like Michael J Kino in uh, Rogue One and I forget who did Solo it's like yeah they're very they're trying like to follow John the John Williams style but they're still like they're they're kind of doing their own thing but it kind of feel they kind of feel lost so to speak but like Gornson just kind of he just goes all out and just makes something that just not only fits like the series itself but like I I I I listen to it just 
like by itself like it's just great music and then you get that dubstep out of nowhere <laughs> and it's just like oh shit and it's like yeah the way like you know there's like oh the, these dark troopers what are they oh they're, they're they're droids and i'm like oh yeah they're they're the robot and then you just see you see him move and you see him like fight you see like mando fighting and i'm like it's just a terminator they just put terminators in star wars and i think that's a that's hilarious yeah it um <laughs> yeah i mean to to be fair uh the the um the Rogue One soundtrack was made very quickly because the yeah original... I know that that was like yeah the guy left that was a weird that was a very weird thing yes um, oh but but yeah so because the Dark Troopers I know that those do come from that those they come, come from, from a video game yeah they, they come from Dark Forces yeah they they come from Dark Forces and like I I played some of that game it, it's basically Doom but Star Wars and it's like that that's where kyle katarn comes from and and like all the the dark forces sequels jedi academy where you know that guy becomes a jedi it's it's all the stuff which i'm i'm sure i mean heck some people got mad that rogue one overwrote what dark forces did even though that game the dust star plans are found in the first level which is just teaching you how to play the game so i'm like oh uh, the movie is probably a bit more interesting than that uh unless i completely forgotten and, and the death star plans are more than that but like um, but yeah, the the dark troopers are yeah. I, I, you get that that Terminator sense from them definitely, and they are presented as imposing. And uh, when you when you see them at first, when they show up and they they capture Grogu, uh, and and like so, it's at the same time as like oh here's Boba Fett, he's back, he's being awesome, he's being cool. Oh, but then there's these these droids that show up, which which are you know from a, a video game a legends game and 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 there you're, you're getting a, a different sort of fan service but also one that's going to tug at your heartstrings because oh no the child's been stolen this is bad um but they really do make them imposing like a normal person would have an extremely difficult time even beginning to defeat them um I, I'm glad that they mentioned, oh, you know, it, it takes a bit for them to power up, this and that, because you kind of need an explanation as to why the the Empire just doesn't use them exclusively, like why they still have cannon fodder. I, I know the Empire at this point is just remnants. I know that there aren't as many people that they can conscript to use, but it is still a thing where you, you need to know why come Episode Seven the stormtroopers aren't just robots um but i i think one, one of the things that i also found interesting is like they they are presented as terrifying it it maybe slightly goes a, a way to justify the use of a droid army in the prequels and how droids could you know storm into naboo and take it over and be like how isn't this interesting because of what happens in the last 20 minutes of the finale where it's like in the prequels the jedis run through with their lightsabers and the droids are, are butter and i know some of the droids are, are harder to fight but like like the like the super battle droids are a bit more intimidating and then there's the droid decas and I, I know i know the regular battle droids are goofy and that's fine but there are definitely better, better. yeah but there are there are plenty <laughs> of non-goofy droids in that army as well and what what's going on here helps helps to justify it and also helps justify why the jedi can have such an easy time fighting them while other people might be terrified of them because mando is able to destroy one and it takes a lot of effort and there's and it was only because he and only because he had his magic stick right like, like the best that magic stick he won yeah well, yeah without the best scar he would be in trouble um yeah. And also, I, I kind of like that even before he shows up, mm -hmm. they, they do kind of have, they find a way to have a lightsaber battle by having, like, mm -hmm. him and, him and uh, Gideon fight, like, when he, with his darksaber and, and, yes. and the sphere. It's like, they, they find, it's like, oh, it, it, it's literally just a lightsaber. Like, before you realize, like, who's going to show up, like, it's like, oh, they, they already put a lightsaber battle. They find a way to put a lightsaber battle in, and, it, and they do it in a clever way, and it's like, okay, like, th that's, that's something that's, that, that's like a fan service way, because, like, they do it, like, that's a fan service way i think that's how like the best way to do like that that kind of fan service because like oh you're not they're not really doing it intentionally it's like oh they kind of this kind of unintentionally happens and it's like as an audience you're like oh, i see what they're doing yes uh, yeah you gotta 
Like, I, I know Star Wars doesn't need lightsabers all over the place, but you still need a lightsaber somewhere. That I'm, um, you know, in, in Rogue One, you get the ending with Vader. Solo was goofy because it was just Darth Maul going, ooh, I have it. I turned it on, I turned it off, goodbye. Um, <laughs> it was like, we have to, but but the way that they they use it in in mandalorian is is good because you, 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 even just sword fight like you don't need to like to be a lightsaber you can have sword fights yeah um yeah it's, it's weird there isn't more sword fights in star wars and Jedi. like you, you don't need a lightsaber to have uh, a sword fight. i mean lightsabers are cooler than a regular sword they're cool but it's like not every character is gonna have a lightsaber so yeah it's but like... lightsabers are cool <laughs> So yeah, so what, yeah, but yeah, but you, yeah, the lightsabers are cool, but you don't have to like be like, oh, I want to have a sword fight, but I don't have a lightsaber. So the, like, there's no way to have a lightsaber in this situation. So I guess we can't have a sword fight. Just fuck it, just pull out a sword, pull out any stick, right. just have people whack with each other. Yeah. I and I mean, and I mean, I guess it's like, I know, I know the dark saber. You know, in the lore, is like it, it belonged to the first Mandalorian Jedi, and you know, he wasn't. He wasn't. It wasn't meant to be like, oh, here's an evil thing, but it definitely feels like an evil lightsaber when in the hands of someone who is evil. And like when those doors opened, and he's holding the lightsaber over Grogu, and it's like, ah, oh, geez, this is this is this, oh, this is fun. What are you doing? Don't be so mean. Look at him. He's so tiny. He's Yoda. He's a baby Yoda. Don't look don't look hurt my death. Look at my death stick. Oh, you want to buy my death stick? <laughs> I I do. It was like. I feel like there it probably is some stories, but it feels weird there aren't more stories of like regular people like getting lightsabers and trying to use it. Like they're like not non force users. Like it feels like like I, I know I like Han grabs like uh, uh, the the lightsaber a couple times, but never actually tries to fight it. Finn is a weird case because it's like oh like the, the like most of the story like like in the Force Awakens when he's using the lightsaber mm-hmm. but then it's like oh like there the Rise of Skywalker there's like hints he might be Force related and apparently he is supposed to be but they never actually fully explain it so it's this weird kind of half measure right but it's like I think I think it's just like because like I mean the lightsaber is just a sword like when you have the Force it's much more easier to use because you can like manipulate the Force to kind of like do more fancier tricks and like uh, like you have a better in tune of like your sword fighting skill but it's like really anybody with us anybody like can you pick up a lightsaber and use so it's like it's weird there is more stories of like somebody finding a lightsaber and just being like i'm gonna use this and get good at it right well i i i mean in uh in in rebels sabine ren has the dark saber for a little while and she she uses it sometimes um but I, I guess it's because in, in in the movies, there was supposed to be the sense that a lightsaber is a little difficult to use. That the idea is you need to hold it with two hands. It feels heavy. It's like a long, a broadsword. And that in Empire, while Luke is, has to use both his hands and that Vader is only using one, that he is taunting Luke. He's like, I know I will win this fight. I'm, I'm merely toying around with you until I get what I want. Like, there's... There, there's supposed to be the sense that that it's it's not super easy to use a lightsaber, and I, I think some of that has slightly gone away. Like it's it's never really shown that it's meant to feel heavy, but there's definitely meant to be power behind it, and it's also incredibly dangerous because wrong one wrong move and you can cut your own arm off, and that would be bad. So yeah, the, 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 that's why that's why I, th- I think that that would be you know, that would be a really cool like series because because I yeah nobody's I don't think anybody's told that story of like maybe some random person finds a lightsaber like th- that would be a great short story of like some person just finding a random lightsaber and playing around with it maybe something goes wrong like I, th- I think like that, that that would be a really interesting I, I it feels like that would be like a novel like there's like a novel or a short story somewhere but I have I've never heard of it so I'm like somebody should do that. Right, it, it, Lucasfilm hire that man. <laughs> right, it, 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 it wouldn't be crazy for someone to find a lightsaber, like especially in the post Order sixty six world. I think where all these Jedi's die, maybe someone drops the lightsaber and falls into oh, the ocean. Oh, Grievous! Fucking Gre- Grievous! Why did I forget about him? Yes, Grievous. He, had... he literally has like a whole thing of lightsabers. It's a fucking robot using it. Come on, he does. Um, yeah, and also in the comics, there was a a different hut who had a whole bunch of like jedi collectibles and he has a whole bunch of lightsabers and so there is an issue where leia and han and chewbacca are all holding lightsabers trying to fight with them 
Um, oh, that's right. I do. Remember. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. So I remember that. there, there, there are moments, but I'm pretty sure Afra used a. She probably wielded a lightsaber at one point. I think she might have. Yeah, she might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, there, there are like instances here and there, but like, like it's like a one-off instance, and then they get rid of it. But I'm like, come on, like somebody, like a non-force user, just like holding on, like actually using, utilizing a lightsaber. It's like, I would not be surprised if at some point in this series, Mando, Mando gets a hold of a lightsaber and ends up using, even like not not like fully, but I would not be surprised, at, especially with how like stuff like this is going. I'm like, I would not be surprised if they want, if they want to like get, they want to manipulate a series of events to have Mandalorian using a lightsaber. It's like, that seems like something they want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe I, I am, I think cause it, it definitely makes sense in, in, in this era that maybe there's a random lightsaber because the the idea you know in the prequels is that you know a lightsaber is is something very special that you you make and you have to you know you have to find the kyber crystal and go through the tasks and then and, and... oh shit he's gonna find anakin's lightsaber isn't he uh i don't know fuck that's that's what's gonna happen that that, that that's how it's he's, he's gonna find the lightsaber and then he's gonna give it to uh What's her phage? What's her Maz? That that's how this series is gonna end. It's gonna end with him finding Anakin's lightsaber and giving it to Maz. I'm I'm, I'm calling it now. That's right. where this is going. I mean, yeah, we we don't. Like, who knows exactly what's supposed to happen with him right now? Because the the whole series yeah. has been focusing on him and Grogu. And okay, well, like, yeah, well, first, so first before we go into that, we'll 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 just we'll talk about that guy. That guy. So. Yeah, so when I'm, I'm pretty sure I told you, I'm pretty sure I said this to you. I don't know if it was in the Rise of Skywalker talk mm-hmm. or this was like a post recording. But when I when I saw the Rise of Skywalker, because the, when the Mandalorian was coming out, I'm like, okay, the the good thing is that we're probably not going to see Luke, Leia, and Han or whatever because they're, they're, because they they're, they're, they're like super old. So it's like, how are they going to like? They're not going to be able to put him in here at all. And then you see, I watch Rise of Skywalker and see diddly digitally de aged Luke and Leia, and I'm like, yes, shit, that that's what they're going to do. So when when the X wing comes in and and like you see like oh the Jedi showed up in the back of my head I'm like Ahsoka maybe then I'm like no. oh may, maybe maybe uh fuck what's his name maybe Ezra no is it gonna be Ezra no maybe no nope. and then and then I see the green and I see the green lights there I'm like is it Ezra no maybe no. maybe no. and then it's like it goes through I was in denial the whole time denial like, the moment I saw the X wing I was like here we go it's Luke <laughs> because. In in the in you know two episodes ago when it's like okay we're gonna we're gonna look for a Jedi and then even the episode prior when Ahsoka goes there aren't many left I know some people were theorizing like oh the the guy from Jedi Fallen Order a game I still haven't played um, or okay, you know Ezra maybe Mace Windows alive somehow but my first <laughs> thought was Luke Luke it, Luke Skywalker come on like he he's the one that's supposed to be putting the Jedi Order back together if there's anyone who is going to go huh I sense something it's going to be Luke you know like it the only reason they wouldn't use Luke is if they were scared to use Luke and I'm glad they weren't scared because we got to see Luke Skywalker and we got to see him show up by himself, there's the X-Wing, he pops out, he's got his lightsaber, he's doing the moves. It's sort of the opposite, a lot of people have said this, the opposite of, of the of the Rogue One sequence in which it's like, you know, Darth Vader, he's tearing things, he's tearing all those people down because he's being evil. But here's Luke Skywalker, and he's tearing down all of those dark troopers because he's he's going to save. Like, and, and, and the fact that they're all robots, it's, it's a lot easier to be like, oh, okay, Luke isn't just killing a bunch of people, because maybe it would seem a little weird that a guy in, in black is killing s- and, stormtroopers. And, I was, and I, I've, I've seen some people being like, there have been some people saying, this is what Last Jedi should have been, and there are some people saying like, oh, th- th- this is betraying Last Jedi, and I'm like, I don't think, like, I mean, like, because you can kind of, like, I mean, the, the scene, like, like you said, there is, there's kind of that sense of, like, oh, Luke's kind of, like, being slightly bloodthirsty, just kind of, like, the way, like, he's killing the robots, but he's, like, he's doing it, like, really hard, so that you, that, that, that does, that does connect with, like, like, the way, like, the way he is in Last Jedi with the whole, like, oh, like, his kind of slight, uh, that that kind of slight dark edge is what made him kind of like tempt tempt himself toward like ac- axing off Ben and then turning him completely cynical by the end. So I don't think it's like I don't think it like it, it it's it's not it's not a purpose. I, I I I don't think it's like a a fuck you at all or anything. Well, I think no. I think it, it does. I think it fit. Yeah, it, it does fit well, like very well, like within the entire narrative. It's like yeah, right. I I don't. It, it is definitely 
a fan service in the sense of like, oh, we get to see Luke at his prime doing these things. But but really, it's because when we when we hit the Last Jedi, even if George Lucas had written the sequel trilogy, it was still going to be Luke sitting in a hut, and he's an old you know the old mentor Obi Wan Kenobi from the original trilogy sense, where he's not he probably wouldn't be doing a whole lot of crazy lightsaber fights, and that it would be more you know. Uh, more more along the this, this, this spiritual, I'm just using force powers, maybe I'll have to bust out the lightsaber eventually. Um, but, but like, the people who wanted to see Luke do what he did, like, those were people who were, who wanted a movie that would have been filmed, like, five years after Return of the Jedi. And so it makes sense that we get to see a Luke that's supposed to be five years after Return of the Jedi, where he is like he is a full on Jedi Master. He is he's 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 doing what would have been great to see in 1989 or 1990 or 91 or whenever. Like like we get to see that like that that brief moment in Rise of Skywalker. Like it was 30 seconds of we could have seen this if the, if a movie had been made 20 years prior or, or 25 years prior. That this, this the sequence here. Is definitely like it, it. It is. It is. It is fan service in in the best way because it it makes sense for everything that's been going on. It's not just oh guys, look, it's Luke Skywalker. He's here out of nowhere. The fact that the story has been about Grogu and it's been about looking for Jedi and we've seen Ahsoka and we've seen Bo Katan and we've seen all of these elements and here's Boba Fett and it, it all it all it all comes together when Luke Skywalker walks into the room. I, I will say what I, I think what makes it work is that nobody goes, oh, you're Luke Skywalker. Like, nobody knows who he is. It's just, oh, you're you're a Jedi and you're the Jedi. Right. So there's kind of this sense of like, so it doesn't feel like, I, I think that, 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 I think there's two things that I think that helped like that scene overall to make it feel less mm-hmm. uh, excessive is that, yeah, the fact that nobody knows who he is. They just see, oh, he's a Jedi and he's a, he's a, you can see he's a very powerful Jedi. So there's that, there's that kind of sense. And the fact that afterward, that the the emotional, it's not really that the scene, it, the scene doesn't end up being about him, it ends up being about uh, Jin and Gorg and uh, Grogu, and like they're kind of goodbye, like how he's there's that thing of like oh, like he's like oh you have to go, and he's like I he, he's asking you for he's asking for your permission, and you get that scene where he takes off the helmet to yeah. look at him to look at him face to face, and you get that very tearful goodbye, and it's like that like that that's that's probably the most powerful I think that's the most powerful moment of like the whole series of just seeing that because you've seen like the that dynamic between the two, like you've seen how much he's cared for him, like how like how much he's willing to break his own codes just for his safety and just like to help him and just they had seen that that he's doing it he's taking off his mask seeing him face to face and you see those tears come like you see those like wet right. tears like starting to come down his eyes and it's just like oh like it, it, it hits you really hard it's just like oh it's 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 the dad taking like letting his son go like he's he's t- letting his like adopted son go like f- for the best and it's like oh they feel, like it, it, it does it takes so it, it it's able to eclipse like cg luke skywalker showing up and that, that that really is like that's a testament to uh pedro pascal and just the way the way they've structured and the way they've uh like just put put everything together i think that that, that definitely helps it also this i mean like the they still haven't fully gotten the the lips yet i mean like 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 all the other times like the lip the, the faces i think are pretty much perfect it's just when once they start talking it's like yeah they haven't gotten they haven't gotten lip like they, they still haven't gotten lip movements to work but but i can understand why they would want to use mark hamill's face instead of hiring someone else at least at this moment in this show um and i, and I yeah obviously and i, I think because there are a lot of people who have thrown out hey you know sebastian stan he looks like a younger mark hamill like he could he could be luke skywalker if he was made up the right way which i i think could work and in the future if they bring back luke skywalker for more than a minute of FaceTime, I would hope that they would use another actor because they haven't quite perfected the way that the CG looks. And, and I'm sure they had to do it in, I mean, they, they must've done it in a different way than how they did Tarkin because Tarkin was super expensive. And yeah. And also to the, Tarkin was doing a dead guy. Like Tarkin was like doing a dead guy. Well, it's like, they actually like, I mean, Hamill was able to go in and set and like they, the film, they were able to like 
to do motion capture and then go over and they have like they have so much more material of young Luke. Right, like th- there's with, a lot. So yeah, that but, definitely helps. But and and they and the fact that they already they already tested that in Rise of Skywalker, so they already had a model made, so they just had to tweak it a bit a bit more. Right, but like if if they had used somebody else, it it might have seen a little bit jarring. The, the the sequence was here. Here's a payoff. You, if you loved Last Jedi or you hated Last Jedi, you're going to like like you should like the sequence. I mean, if if there are people who say that that sequence some is is throwing like it's saying fuck you to Last Jedi, I don't understand that because it's it's a younger Luke in a different place and like he is doing things that he needs to do to save people. You know, he can't. It would it would be weird for him to to do something else completely. I think, but but it, it's also like here's the the mandalorian here's this key moment if we're tying it into the into the larger saga to have that one final moment of that is mark hamill's face and when he steps away maybe the next time we see him it won't be mark hamill but it it is you know it's putting like a little cherry on top because we should have gotten more mark hamill in rise of skywalker you know dead stop like he should have been in that movie way more than he was even you know as a force ghost, he's not stuck in one spot, but I feel like that's another conversation entirely if we wanted to get into what the movie could have been or whatnot. Also, but also I didn't I didn't think it was like the when I was hearing him talk, I didn't think I honestly thought it was a, like a voice double because like, I knew like I saw like oh they probably yeah they they got Hamill and like the de- digitally de-aged him. But when I heard the voice, I'm like that that doesn't sound like him. Like did, did, did they get a voice double? But then he's credited in the credits, so I'm like oh. I guess, well, but then I'm like, duh. <laughs> oh, voice actor extraordinaire Mark Hamill can do a different voice. Gee, that ex- that, that, that that caught me off guard. And I mean, they might have tweaked it in post to make him sound a little bit younger. Who knows? Yeah, possibly. But it's like, yeah, but I'm, yeah, but also like, he is like, they, they, it, they do it in such a way, like, he does, he sounds, he sounds similar to how he sounds in Jedi, but also sounds different enough because it's like, oh, it's, he, this is several years later, so he shouldn't sound exactly the same. So they kind of do, they do a good job of being like, oh, this is how a slightly older Luke would sound. Right. Oh, well, you know, it's, it's only been a few years. It's not like he got old old but well i mean he sounds i mean he already got he already like when he went through puberty between four or five i mean he he sounds pretty different between four or five and six already so it's like it's not like a complete surprise yeah but i mean it it just that 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 sequence works and yeah i mean also the, the, the with with pedro and pascal and and Grogu, it works like that works, and the fact we saw R two D two, you can't. Yeah, I was I was gonna say is that because the whole time I was like in the back of my head, I'm like, what if this is a trap? Like just I'm, I'm thinking, what if this is the trap? And then they bring R two D two. I'm like, okay, the, 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 that's there to confirm that. Okay, no, this is actually Luke. Wait, how would it not be Luke? Why would it be? A, how could it be? A, I, I don't. Know, I, I I just had like this idea in my head of like, what what if like what if what if there's like a trick? What if like, what if we're meant to think it's Luke, but then it turns out not to be Luke? Like I don't. There's this thing of like, oh, there. I it felt like there there might be a bait and switch, so to speak. But then seeing R two D two, I'm like, okay, it actually is Luke. That, that, that that's that's probably just me being paranoid. Uh, yeah, I like I don't know. I don't I don't completely trust you, CG face. I, it, it, it's Luke. He shows up. He light. He 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 ignites the green lightsaber. I know it. Ma- it makes sense, but it's just when you're watching it like for the first time, you're kind of in that weird kind of space of like eat, whether you're excited or you're befuddled in some way. You're still kind of like like you're you're, you're trying to you're still trying to piece together like <laughs> what did I watch? Like you're still like like what did I watch? What did I just watch? You're watching Star Wars. Yeah. Um. I, I did like the scene. The scene right before that, I I, I was laughing like when when uh, when um, uh, Gideon was like was basically laughing to Mando of like you got the sword now and he's, he's like he's like here you go here's the sword he's like no she has to win the sword that's how she that's how she becomes the thing of Mandalorian he's like uh I yield here take the sword it's like no that's not how it works and the whole time I'm screaming just just take the fucking sword fuck your code and fuck your morals don't don't cause more drama but thankfully like I was worried that was how the season was going to end is that oh we're going to get this sudden like like infighting but like it looks like they're going to be saving it for next season, which I think is mu- that's yeah. much smarter to kind of deal with that aftermath yeah. rather than having the season suddenly end with this kind of like kind of dumb infighting. Right. Well, I mean, 
we don't really know what season three is. Like, is it normal? Okay, because yeah, see, that's the well, yeah. So then, then finally, you get a, you get a post credit scene where Boba Fett, I guess, wants to become king of Tatooine. Well, he, he, he just go he just goes to he just goes to Jabba's palace. He, he kill he kills a Bib Fortuna, and then he just sits on the throne all like all badass like. And I'm like, why do you want to be king of Tatooine? He's not the king of Tat. Jabba the Hutt was not the king of Tatooine. I know he's not act- I know he's, he's not literally the king, but it's like you see him sitting on the throne and he's like, I'm the king, bitch. He's he's he is Jabba, Jabba the Hutt is he's a crime lord. So You know what I mean. I know it's not literally the king, but it's like, come on, he's sitting on the throne like that. He he's sitting like Loki in Thor the Dark World, like he's doing the same thing. Right. Well, like if 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 Boba Fett it, it definitely tells us that, sure, he did this nice thing to help with Grogu, but he's still Boba Fett, and he definitely sits in the criminal underworld. And if this show had been about Boba Fett, it would have been a lot harder to be like, well, here here's your protagonist, and you're going to root for him, and you're going to like him. Boba Fett is meant to ride that line where maybe sometimes he'll do something that's nice, but most of the time, you know, he is out for himself. He is, you know, he, he's a he's a bounty hunter. He was willing to, you know, get Han Solo and put him in carbonite and didn't care about the rebellion. And he's just like, I want to get paid. Yeah, M- M- Mando is basically, like, Mando is like the, cl- there, there, is, is that Han Solo character where it's like on the surface, he kind of acts like the, an anti-hero, but he very much is more, right. like, he's much more on the hero side. Like he, he has like more moral code, but like Boba Fett is very much that anti-hero. Like he'll just do, he'll do whatever, whatever job he needs, like more morality right. wise or whatever. Be- because like Boba Fett is wearing Mandalorian, Man- Mandalorian armor, but he's not a Mandalorian. Django, like they they say in the show, oh, or or you know, Jin is like, oh, you were a foundling like me, which that could be true, but in the Clone Wars animated series, there is a moment where uh, Obi Wan brings up the fact, oh, I've met one of you before. I had to fight him. His name was Django Fett, and the I forget who it is in that scene, but he's like, oh, Django, he's not a Mandalorian, and there was sort of this, and even. George Lucas was like, hey, Jango Fett's not, not Mandalore. There's other Mandalorians, but he's not, even though he's got the, the armor. And so there was always like this this confusing, like, what does that mean? So Yeah, and there well and then there were there were, and there was that scene with yeah, there was the scene with the other Mandalorian when she was calling uh Boba Fett out and yeah, she's like she that she, she's yeah, she's like, Oh, you're not a Mandalorian and there's kind of this thing of like, yeah, like even uh yeah, because like it gets to the point where like we're uh, yeah, like, where Jin isn't actually saying it like that whole time when she's like when she because uh, in, in that in the first episode when they showed up, he's the one criticizing them of like oh you guys aren't real Mandalorians, and then you get to this scene where like she's uh, criticizing a boba, a boba mm-hmm. and uh, yeah and, yeah and Jin isn't and, like Jin isn't saying anything in that scene because he's because at this point like I mean like the whole like the whole time he's kind of like been very lax like he, he's becoming more lax with this code because he's like oh he's seen what Fett can do. He knows that oh that armor like actually right. belongs. Like he, he pulled up his receipts. Is like oh you see this? This, this this is my suit. And he's like okay fine. You 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 prove that it, that it's legally yours. Right. It it is the the entire show. The moment he meets Grogu to the moment he he lets him go. It is it is him growing and changing as a person and and questioning like oh here's here are, here are some of my core beliefs. But are my core beliefs the truth is that should that be my truth should that really be what how things are you you get you get to see all of that through this through these 16 episodes and that does culminate chapter one chapter one is this is the way mm-hmm. chapter 16 is this is the way <laughs> the question mark it, it it's it's good and it's interesting and like I I do want to see more of him but I'm wondering because in that post credit scene when there's Boba Fett and he shoots Bib Fortuna and is like, now, now I'm going to, I guess I'm going to be in charge. It, it says coming soon, the book of Boba Fett. These two seasons have been chapters one through 16, presumably of a book, maybe the book of, of Jin, Jin, um, uh, you know, him. So does that mean season three now shifts to focusing on Boba Fett? Does that mean that we're seeing like, we're not, 
going to see what happens immediately with the characters that we left on that ship that Luke Skywalker left or is that suppo- or is the Boba Fett thing meant to be its own show like it's not very clear so we kind of go off for a fair bit debating amongst ourselves whether the Mandalorian season three and the book of Boba Fett were two different things, what exactly they were. And literally the next morning, they come out with this TV press conference to confirm that, yes, the book of Boba Fett is in fact its own separate six to eight episode, probably miniseries or series that'll be coming out in December 2021 with the Mandalorian season three as its own separate thing probably right after it sometime in 2022 rather than not before it in 2021 we also learned that it was going to be show run by robert rodriguez which i'm really excited for because i love i love his work in this series and i love his work elsewhere so that's a big plus right there so just kind of ignore all the mentions of the questionings of what exactly book of boba fett and mandalorian season three are going to be just because we try to be timely and even then we're not timely enough poo yeah, th- th- this is what I think, uh, just because from looking at because remember when I saw that, I'm like, so it says December 2021, mm-hmm. and like the seasons have like been like uh, late October, early November, like the first two seasons, and we know they've already started working on season three. Right. But then like we also know that we, there was the course, the whole like announcement where they revealed everything that was coming out of Star Wars and like that Boba Fett thing wasn't mentioned, but that was obviously because they want to keep it a secret. Yeah. But so the, the question is that, yes. Yeah, so, so the question is, is that so like people have like looked into, cause a lot of people were wondering this too. I've read some stuff there. It's like, it seems like the production of Mandalorian three and the production of the book of Boba Fett, whatever that is, are two separate productions. So it very much seems like, three especially because i know like yeah pedro pascal like they they said he's still like he's still signed for season three and four and stuff i know even uh john carlos pasito has said that oh he's he's still signed for season three and four as well so it does seem more likely than not that season three is going to continue with uh, mando and that whole crew which on what first off i I think it's like really interesting because the the first the way the first season ended off is that we knew what was like we know what the general idea of season two was that oh he's gonna go around trying to find a place for grogu Mm -hmm. but now with season two it's like we don't we have no idea where season three is gonna end off like yeah we got we got the stuff with the dark got the stuff with the dark saber and like the mandalore and stuff like that but it's like we don't know like we like what is he gonna is he gonna go back to bounty hunting is he gonna try and resolve uh the issue regarding like uh yeah with his relationship with bo katan is he gonna go to mandalore and like maybe like try and like restart off something over there and it's like there's like so there's like pretty much so many different like what like they they've captured gideon but he's probably not gonna stay captured like what else what else does he like what else is he gonna be doing like what else is the empire gonna be doing so that there there are so many different like uh directions that the season could go and we really have no idea so i think that that's also really exciting is that they pretty much have like a a fresh start to kind of go it's like oh they they ended they ended the grogu story Mm -hmm. so now they can just go and Maybe about him kind of struggling with being alone again. Maybe like he tries to find like maybe maybe he joins a group because he's like, oh, he's 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 gotten used to not always being alone and he wants to be with other people. And then, yeah, then and then the book of Boba Fett, it feels like like I have no I it makes the fact that they said December 2021 makes me feel like it's going to end up being like a mini movie. Like they're going to like do like an hour and a half like movie on Disney Plus, like a special rather than have it be like another six to eight episode miniseries. I don't know. Just because it's like just I mean, it's possible. Like they could, they could easily make it a series, but I feel like it, it, it seems like also as likely that they could just be like, oh, here's a like, yeah, like a mini movie that we could put on uh, Disney Plus, like a, like an epilogue to like, we have, we have all eight episodes of Mandalorian season three, and then it ends with, oh, and now here's the book of Boba Fett. I, I, I guess the, the reason I would assume it's a, a show instead of a movie is just because the way Mandalorian is presented where each episode is a chapter, and then they specifically call the Boba Fett thing a book makes me go hmm there could be a a similar format even if it's not eight episodes that it would be more than one but i mean it 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 does open up like what's going to happen next um yeah in in, like in in the sense that because we we know that all these other shows are supposed to be coming out and two of them seem very much like spin-offs of the mandalorian um got the ahsoka show coming and then there's the, um... the everything that was announced during uh, that that whole talk. There was Star Wars Visions, which is that that's the that's the anime uh, like Star Wars that's going to be coming out at the end of next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, St- uh, Star Wars Andor, uh, which is the uh, the Cassian Andor uh, series. That's a, the Cassian Andor 
uh, like prequel series. Right. Uh, the, uh, we have Rangers of the New Republic. Yes. Which I guess is supposed to be like, uh, yeah, I, th- I think th- th- that's supposed to be like probably, I mean, I was going to say it seemed like, like Cara Dune and like those people, but I mean, I don't know if Cara Dune's still going to be on, at least if they're smart, probably not because, I... uh, because uh, the thing thing is a piece of shit, and it kind of feel like like it was it was a thing I kind of like okay I, I kind of like sat sat it by because they filmed all this before she she revealed uh, how much of an asshole she is but I'm like I hope they don't kind of like put her in that starring role just because it's gonna be really uncomfortable for me. I mean, it might it might star her. It might just be like the the concept of her or like the concept of what. Those she people. represents. I, I yeah. like the was it the, the 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 guy like the guy who appeared in like the he was in the the the, the cave episode. He was with because uh, it was Dave Filoni and then there was the other guy who was uh, he was in the episode. Then he that he was the mm-hmm. one who went to go talk to Kara. Yeah. I really he he's he's in Kim's convenience. I really he's so funny. I hope he's in that because I I love I just love see, seeing him show up even as just a little cameo. I thought was like I had I got a real giddy sweet out of that. I'm like oh I hope they bring him back for more. All right. Well, they don't technically yeah. call Kara Dune a ranger, right? They call her something else, like a, an art, like a like yeah, like, she, they, they just, like a marshal. The that's what they yeah, marshal. That's what it is. So yeah. I mean, it could it it might not have anything to do with with her if she's a marshal, yeah. and then they are and there's rangers, then it might just be like oh guys flying around in X wings going to planets and doing stuff. Yeah, um, it'll, it'll de- like it, that is something I just kind of yeah because a lot of there's always the thing of like they like a lot of like Star Wars is really vague of like oh yeah after the new after the empires are destroyed and they they mm-hmm. create the new republic it's like what is the new republic what exactly are they doing like a lot of the novels like go into that mm-hmm. but like not really many of the media have so like that'd be a good thing of like showing oh what exactly is this government and like how do they like handle like protecting the like the, the galaxy right and then like as you mentioned the the, the ashoka series um the obi-wan kenobi series mm-hmm. which uh that it feels like that's basically just gonna be like the you, you know you know that you know that arc in uh that that arc in the, the early comics where it's like it's like a three or four epi- it's like a three or four issue kind of like side story where it's like the journals of obi-wan kenobi where you see like what he's doing yeah on obi on, on tatooine when he's like secretly protecting luke and like owen's like, like he keeps going get the fuck out of here we don't want you here i mean it, it might start that way but i would be surprised like the, the fact that they announced that Hayden Christensen is going to come back as Darth Vader, that tells me that at some point they're going to take Obi-Wan off Tatooine. The hope would be he's not taken off on, like, he doesn't just leave himself. Like, like I, I think, like, wh- where he is somehow forced off that planet. And per- personally, I'm hoping that it's just flashbacks and to war streams i don't i i hope it's not oh because i feel like like the the one of like the big things of like is that the fact that yeah obi-wan and uh anakin slash vader don't see each other like all that time but if they can like say sense each other or like he remembers back to certain times like i think that would work very well what? but i just hope they don't actually see each other uh, i want them to see each other like i want mm. no no because here, here's the thing okay so you, you got the prequels. Maybe, maybe you can, maybe you can do like the sequel trilogy. Have them like meet each other. Like to, to do, do what Ray, do what Ray and uh, Kylo Ren did in uh, Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. Have them like, like do, 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 do that thing. Like if they can do, if they do it that way, I'll be fine with. I mean, like, like the, the, the wait, wait, say that again. How? Like you know, in like Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker, when like Ray and Kylo Ren, like, oh, the they force, see okay. each other through the force, yeah. that like force connection. If they do it that way, I think I would like I would be <sighs> like where they're they're kind of like talking to each other, like they have that kind of connection where they're talking to each other, but they're not seeing each other physically in person. No, but I think that would work very well. But I think an actual physical confrontation with each other, I feel, would just be a bit too. Uh... It's kind of well, because because here's the thing, right? Okay, so so in the original Star Wars. Okay, you got Darth Vader, he's strolling around on the Death Star, right? And, and Obi-Wan is sneaking around because he needs to turn off a, a tractor beam. And, you, and you've got Darth Vader, and he's like, oh, you know, that he senses something, a presence I haven't felt since, and then he trails off, you know, leaving that door open. But then you have that uh, moment in, last, uh, not, uh, in Return of the Jedi, in which Vader, you know, because Luke is like, hey, I know they're still good in ya, this, this is fine, like... 
you could be Anakin Skywalker. And Vader goes, you know, Obi-Wan once thought as you did. But the thing is, like, in Revenge of the Sith, once he's Darth Vader, once he's running around and he's, you know, killed the, um, the, the Separatists and he's like, here I am on Mustafar and everything's lava and Obi-Wan shows up, he's not sitting there going, hey, turn back to the light side. He's like, what did you do? Why are you doing this? I'm so confused. They never have, he never has the conversation of, let's turn back to the light. Let's, let's all go home and it'll be fine. You don't have Obi-Wan thinking as Luke once did that Darth Vader could be redeemed and become Anakin Skywalker again. You don't have that. It hasn't happened yet. So if, if Vader is saying this, then that could imply that at some point they can meet up because also in the original star wars you know tarkin is very sure like oh i mean wouldn't obi-wan be dead by now but obi-wan clearly wasn't killed in order 66 that seems like information that tarkin would know that there are x amount of jedi still alive and obi-wan is not confirmed dead so for him to go oh yeah he's dead right that means not just, oh, he went into hiding, but maybe something happened that would make everyone think he could be dead. So, so there, there are those doors open that would have at least one final confrontation between Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader. Most of the show should probably be on, on Tatooine, but I could see there being something that happens. He's taking off planet, perhaps not of his own free will. I mean, you know, it, it, it's not him going, oh, I'm, I'm going to hop in a spaceship and fly away. Like, something would have to happen that would put all of that in jeopardy. I, I do I do think that's probably... The, that, 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 that probably was, like, at least one of the ideas when they were talking about it as a movie... But I think I think overall it, it probably works. It'll work better as a TV series because then you can have like those. Like you could have one whole episode of just Obi Wan just by himself reflecting on things. Like you can have those slow moments mm -hmm. like in a TV series where it's just oh like one episode of Ewan, Ewan McGregor all by himself just kind of like reflecting, feeling sad, or trying to figure out what he wants to do or what he should do. And it's like, oh, that, that would be something that would be really powerful in, like, a television scope, where it's like, in a film, you wouldn't be able to get away with that. Right. Uh, yeah, there's there, there, there's a lot that, that could be done there. And I, I like, the Obi-Wan show is something that I've been looking forward to since the rumors of, the like, the movie, even. Because it was like, oh, you know, an Obi-Wan movie, that, that would definitely be connective tissue to link three and four together. And so it being a show, having the room to breathe and explore, like, who Obi-Wan becomes and, and delving a bit more into the relationship between, like, Obi-Wan and Anakin and, and maybe, like, Obi-Wan and, and Vader. I mean, you know, in, in Rebels, they have... Ahsoka meet Vader and they have a fight. Like Obi Wan can do the same thing. It's fine. There's also the Bad Bunch, right? The the spin off slash continuation of the Clone Wars uh, animated series. Which apparently I literally just did like I literally just figured this out now. Like looking up stuff is that uh like Ming Na Wen's character is apparently going to be in that. Oh okay. Uh, like Fennec, Fennec uh yeah yeah Fennec. Right. She had it said, it said like, because it said, oh, she, character from The Mandalorian and the upcoming Bad Bunch. And I'm like, huh, I didn't know that. Yeah, because I, I was trying to figure out, like, like what, because uh, what was it? They they, they appeared, yeah, because they appeared in uh, that, that, like, one of those, one of those episodes of the final season of Clone Wars. And that was basically just the thing of, like, oh, these guys are going to, like, have a thing. Like, they're, like, it was basically just a big backdoor pilot. Right. Which, which, it's not the first time Clone Wars has had a backdoor pilot, but this is the first time that it actually becomes a series uh there's a, there's an episode with a with young jedi and, and there was going to be like a younglings shit spin-off show but that didn't happen that was scrapped because you know the entire clone war show got canceled um you know before they brought it back so um but yeah so yeah there's that um the lando lando uh, yes which yeah they, they still haven't confirmed if it's uh donald glover but it's like i mean like if it's not there's no point <laughs> just, right. just it, bring back yeah I, if they if they bring if they get donald glover back then it's like yeah i'm all for that because he's awesome i feel like they they locked him in for something long ago like oh you're in this movie i'm sure they i i think they were all signed to a trilogy so it probably wouldn't be hard to, to renegotiate and say oh instead of two more movies why don't you do a couple seasons of a show yeah. 
I, I'm interested, like, to know, like, creative why, because it's like, yeah, Rangers of the New. It feels like Ahsoka is gonna be like, yeah, like Dave Filoni is gonna take the charge as the showrunner for that. Mm-hmm. See, Rangers of the like, is yeah, John Favreau is gonna be sticking with Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. I'm curious who they're gonna get for Rangers of the New. Like, yeah, they they've got somebody in charge of Obi Wan. A Rangers of the New Republic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm interested to see who they're gonna get to kind of like steer the ship on that. Uh, same with the bad, like, I don't know if Bad Bunch is, like, going to be Filoni again, if he's going to be juggling all that, or there's going to be somebody else taking the reins. Uh, Lando, yeah, they haven't confirmed who that's going to be. I don't know if they would, but I hope that they, I, I, I think it'd be really cool if they get, uh, like, uh, yeah, because Donald Glover is, like, I mean, he created Atlanta, directed a whole bunch, directed and writes a whole bunch of episodes that, I'm like, I think it'd be really cool if they say, hey, do you want to write and direct this Lando series? Right. I think that would be something real, to see what his, he would, like, do his pen, because he's a great, uh, creative director in his own right. Yeah, I mean, I, I would hope that all these shows, um, have multiple directors, like the Mandalorian has had, yeah, but yeah, they 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 had multiple directors, but like have like the like the the John Favreau or like R- like the, the showrunner who's like right. the one yes. who kind of who oversees. Yes, it. if Donald Glover was the uh, the showrunner, I'd I'd be okay with that because he, he definitely he he seemed to embody Lando in a way that like because it when when you're following up Billy D. Williams, you have a lot on your shoulders, and I and I know you know a lot of people had a hard time buying into Solo because they they thought that the the guy they got to be solo didn't quite work. He wasn't he wasn't Harrison Ford, and so we're not going to deal with it. But it'll, most people seem to say, but yeah, Lando felt like Lando. So, I mean, I would be okay with that. And, and the one I'm actually most excited for is the Acolyte. Yeah, it's like uh, the Acolyte is sort of the the odd one out because the other shows. Um, so, because if it, if it's if it's uh, Mando, Rangers, Ahsoka, and if Boba Fett's its, its own separate thing, there's like four shows taking place at one time. You know, the ability to intersect with each other. Uh, Obi Wan, uh, Andor, uh, and uh, Lando, Lando and Bad Bunch, which are prequels. Right, like the, there's there's the possibilities for things, even if they're not all taking place at the exact same time. There's room for things to to cross over or hint at each other, you know. Like I don't want to see Obi Wan hanging out with Cassie and Andor, but there could be, you know, a thread here that links over there, and like Lando's somewhere in between, and and who, you know, like all that. But but Acolyte is it gets to be its own thing. So it if it's uh, which that's really exciting yeah because because i mean it like because they, they they've made their the new high republic like thing which is basically just their rebranding of the knights of the old republic like that, right. that like well, hundred years in the past era right because i guess it's it's like if if knights of the old republic is a thousand years ago then the high republic is a few hundred years ago right because there's yeah. all those um the the, the books and comics that they're planning you know that sort of multimedia event and i guess the acolyte can slip right in there because this is oh the the dark side's trying to rise again and i really yeah i i am interested in seeing how that goes and it, it gets and, all, and it's being worked on by uh leslie headland who made a russian doll which i absolutely it's a it's a series i absolutely love oh. so i think like see, get, getting her to like basically build like the build build like a star wars series that doesn't really have to worry about like like it, it's so far removed from everything that she basically can create her own like story like just in this universe and i'm like oh that, that that's like super that's really super exciting like that was why like that was something that like i, th- I think it's it's on pause so to speak but ryan johnson's kind of like the his like that tr- that that his series of movies which were supposedly supposed to take place in like the far future mm-hmm. and like that th- that was something that just um, a star wars movie star wars like series or movies or whatever that are so far removed mm-hmm. from everything else it's like i want to see that like that because it's like oh you have the idea of this star wars and this galaxy and these locations but it's like you have brand new characters and stuff inhabiting it so you can see how do these guys deal with these environments and these situations and i think like just like that that whole idea is like really exciting to see yeah and i feel like i feel like the johnson stuff is i don't think it's straight up canceled but i think it's pretty much put on hold of like people on the internet are dumb we're scared you're busy with knives out right now so we'll just let you do all that stuff and if we're if both of us are like in the right mood then we'll come back and work on it but right now we're both good i think it's like it's not really a like bad relationship broken but it's very much a like we're we're like step we're like stepping on glass at this point 
Yeah, I, I, I think they're they're just holding back a little, and I mean, because also locking into another trilogy and going full, because remember it was oh here's the Ryan Johnson trilogy, and then there's the Benioff and Weiss trilogy, which also you know died like they 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 were so hyper focused on the movies because they wanted to recreate what was going on with marvel but really uh the fact that they're stepping back and going we're gonna we're gonna play in the television sandbox and we're gonna be we're slowly reintroduce the you know getting back into the movies because like a star wars movie is meant to feel like this super special event and well I say meant, but I, it just sort of became that way because you had three years in between the original trilogy. Then you had to wait, um, what, 14, no, 16 years until the next one. And it was still three years in between. He didn't, Lucas didn't say, I'm going to film all three at once and release them, you know, Lord of the Rings style. It was, there's three years in between. I'm making six. It's done. It And like, it, it was special when episode seven came out. It had been a decade, but then they, they just tried to, shifted into gear and instead of like making it still feel like an event and then slowly growing like maybe we can do one a year me you know yeah and yeah and, and it's I, I think so well, solo it was a combination of solo bombing and the fact that they just kept losing slash firing their creators like i think it's funny that the last jedi and the mandalorian so far are the only star wars projects that didn't get like completely messed up in like uh post-production at all right like, force awakens like that was well that had like its whole thing with pre-production of like oh there's michael arndt's script then abrams came in and he completely rewrote it and all that stuff you had rogue one with gareth edwards mm-hmm. and then uh they had tony gilroy come in and do the reshoots yeah. he had uh solo which it was phil lauren chris miller then halfway through they're like oh no you're being too you're not using lauren's cast and script get out right and then they brought hey. in ryan ron howard and he had to do all that stuff then Colin Trevor was supposed to be episode nine and then book of Henry came out and they're like, ah, oh, we're scared. Get rid of him. And they brought Abrams and then Abrams did all of his stuff. And then, yeah. uh, Josh Trank was supposed to do, uh, Boba Fett. And then, uh, the, the fantastic four came out and they're like, nope. Uh, David Benioff and DB Weiss were supposed to make their movie. And then the game of Thrones season eight came out and they're like, yeah, nope. <laughs> so it's just like, they just kept, there was both the, 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 I forget I feel like James Mangold was supposed to do the Obi-Wan movie, but then that fell out uh, at some point before they ended up moving it to a TV. I think it was like that, then that fell out, then they just said, screw it, let's make it a TV show. And so it's like, it's just it's just so much weird weirdness just all over the place, like just creatively with those guys over there. Right. And it feels like, yeah, like now they finally figured out that they, they, they got they got Patty Jenkins uh, mm-hmm. right after doing Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 84. They got her to come over to do a Rogue Squadron movie, which sounds really cool. And then they, of course, got Taika Waititi to then do his own uh, movie right afterwards. Right. Yeah, it, 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 it makes sense to do some standalone films have you know uh a year in between where there is no star wars movie there's plenty of star wars content on tv you know even when the the movies were few and far between you had all of that auxiliary content coming at you there were a a million books and comics that came out in between the movies and there, there there were a couple years you know in the late 80s where there was no star wars anywhere but you know starting with heir to the empire you you have like a full bookshelf of books and multiple boxes of comics like they there wasn't a lack of star wars but if you keep the the movies as something special i think that that helps with what the brand is and and then the, the movies are something in, important and it's also something important to the overall story yeah, so, so Ro- yeah, so Rogue Squadron will be coming out four years after Rise of Skywalker. So it's like, oh, you've got like a pretty decent like wait. Yeah. And then it's it's where yeah, it's unsure. I assume probably two year at very least two years in between because I don't think it's gonna I don't think it's gonna be a full like three years. But because especially because like because it feel it feels like no. yeah, since Rogue Wars, Rogue Squadron is twenty twenty three. Uh, right. uh, ty- uh, YT, uh, Thor: Love and Thunder is coming out in twenty twenty two. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's like maybe 2025 they decide to do that because I don't think it's like he's gonna wait because it feels like he's gonna do it right after Thor and I don't think they're gonna wait too long like right. they're not gonna they're not gonna have him wait like to- so long. I, I think they said so it's like, 23, yeah. 25, 27 that it's 
every oh, two okay. years that something's coming. Yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know, I'm I'm curious to see. Like, I do we know what time frame Rogue Squadron is supposed to be? I I, I need I I forget if I don't think uh, she meant in in that video where it's babe where she's basically like, oh yeah, I'm making Rogue Squadron. I don't think they they said when it takes. It feels like it just. I hope it's not in that Rogue One era, just because I feel like we we've gone we've gone to that well so many times that I feel like I hope they like they find like a new direction to take because it's like just the fact that that she's like because she, she, she's a great director and it's like that idea it, like see, it sounds really cool so it's like I hope they they find a good time like I, they find a good time frame w- that hasn't really been touched on. I, I would assume it's it's either between six and seven or it's after nine. I don't think it were because. Rogue One, like Rogue One, is right before episode. Like it, it flows immediately into Episode Four. Rogue Squadron, like that's the name of the squad uh, that you know Luke and Wedge are a part of, and you you can't. So unless it's like I'm making a random movie where Luke and Wedge are flying about between four and five, which seems a little odd to do right now, I would imagine it's it's either post six and it's Wedge and it evokes. You, you know the the stackpole books and comics or it's after nine and they're like it's a new squadron and they're using the name rogue squadron uh and, and maybe even like old wedge is sitting there and and like mentoring it, it could be either or i know like i'm hoping it's post nine because yeah because post nine it's like that'll give them like so much more freedom to do whatever they want because like yeah if they if they stick in between a specific time period then it's like it, feel, it feels like they'll be limited a bit right i know the slug line is like oh we're you know the future of star wars but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the literal future of star wars it could be between six and seven i don't know it, it i mean either way I'm looking forward to it and, and seeing where it goes. I mean, if if we, if we want the future of Star Wars, there's the Lego Star Wars Holiday Special, which technically canonically takes place after Rise of Skywalker. Right, which, which I haven't watched yet. So <laughs> yeah, I haven't watched it. Either. I haven't watched it. Got a chance to watch it. Yeah, either. I don't think it's technically canon, it's, but it's like it does take place. Like I don't know if they've mentioned uh, if it's like if it counts as canon, but it does take place after it. So that's like the closest thing to sequel stuff. Right. I. I mean, we'll we'll see. I guess it depends on whether or not Disney feels comfortable going past nine and like fully embracing and saying Rise of Skywalker is there. You're dealing with it. We're never changing it because you, you know it. It. I, yeah. I guess it depends how comfortable they feel with the sequel trilogy going forward, or if they just want to not touch it, like how they were hands off with the prequel trilogy when they got things started on the Disney side of things, and then later felt more comfortable embracing the prequel stuff and and letting people and i feel like it, do it. even how rise of skywalker ends like it gives a lot of room i mean like it gives still a lot of room to like yeah for like the rogue shot and like yeah it's just like you don't need to like mention like the, those main characters or whatever it's like they're like the way like the way those characters like stories ended it feel like it still leaves a lot of room for other stuff to happen so it's like you can have like these like rogue squadron people doing their own thing like throughout the galaxy and it's like oh yeah you don't have to mention or meet up with those characters at all because it's just oh it's just this is the future where again we we took down the we took down the the empire 2.0 so it's like oh now is there going to be another thing of bad guys that we got to take care of or it's like like well, what is what is the world look like now and it's just like right like the, the, there is still the, the, there is there's a room to work with like in a future post rise of skywalker without having to lean on the events of rise of skywalker like you can like it, you don't need to like to be so slavish to exactly what happened you can just be like oh that happened now we're doing new stuff yeah yeah there, there, there's definitely room um so it, it'll be interesting and i i mean maybe that would also give the excuse to to bring back poe because everyone loves poe not not saying he would be a featured character but more like yeah. off to the side he might have a cameo in that movie you know i mean it's, yeah, it's basically just a, well at this point it's pretty much just be a if they pay him well right because i mean like that those guys are pretty much in like they're, i mean they're in the thing of like yeah they they, they kind of they kind of got like especially like john boyega daisy ridley a bit like they all kind of got like a little like screwy here and there regarding like treatment on like star wars whether that was fan wise or story wise so they've kind of reached that they've they, i mean I, I know poe is kind of, uh oscar isaac has kind of been like that harrison ford thing of like if you pay me i'll do it but it's like i don't really have like he just, he's not super enthusiastic yeah uh, yeah and i mean i i which I, wish, I don't blame i don't blame them it's like they can feel however they want yeah no i i, I don't that. blame them either it, it feels like they were definitely pulled in all 
sorts of directions and you know because considering how embraced they all were after the force awakens and then things just went off the rails where it, half the fandom is just wants to hate everything it, it it gets a little funky but also you know harrison ford famously said that he would never do it again and he came back and then they gave him a lot of they gave him a lot of money and indiana jones 5 right which is still apparently happening but the, i mean they I, gave it another date <laughs> I mean, I, I also think that, like, you know, with this time passes and, and wounds are healed and new people are put in charge and, and then they're like, well, compensate you properly. You know, the, plenty of things can happen where in 15 years you, you'll, that's pre- you know. That's pretty much what happened with the MCU is that a lot of people were kind of like slightly disenfranchised like disenfranchised. And then after certain people left, they were like, OK, we're more open to doing more stuff. And it's and and of course like there's always like the weird. I mean like I know Oscar like Oscar Isaac. He's I I don't think it's been confirmed, uh-huh. but he's been in talks to play uh to play Moon Knight in that's in that series. So it's like there there's like they're all like I mean like right. the giant corporate entity. I mean like Patty Jenkins was supposed to do uh, Thor: The Dark World and that fell through, and now she's back doing this. So it's like yeah, again after so many years, it's like yeah they're like they they all they all have like the right. weird things but like yeah like things change and it's like oh now's the time i can go back it's like i didn't that project didn't work out but this project did so it's like yeah again you never know all right so i'm you know uh, i i would be i wouldn't be surprised at some point down the line they come back but you know that that would be down the line uh, yeah uh i'll also mention one other thing about you know the fact that luke skywalker is, is dropped in and it's like oh he's there he has the child with him he has grogu um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing more Luke post what we see in the Mandalorian, you know, Luke between six and seven. And, you know, one of the things, um, I, I, I know the idea of Luke tried to make a new Jedi Academy and it blew up and everyone died, sort of left a bad taste in some people's mouths. But there's always been this thought in the back of my head where, you know, there's 30 years between 20, 25 technically at this point because yeah we're five years right well what i mean is between six and seven there's like 30 years right and there's plenty of time for luke to start an academy train a group of jedi they become jedi he leaves and he does it again the we, like when luke says oh i'm the last jedi the jedi order is dying with me a lot some of that could just be hyperbole because he's also dealing with someone who he doesn't want to train as a Jedi. He wants it to be over and done with because he's in a very, you know, grumpy mood. But, you know, Yoda in Return of the Jedi is like, oh yeah, when I die, you, Luke Skywalker, will be the last Jedi. But, you know, we don't... He isn't. <laughs> right, well, I mean, because... Well, there's the, cause there's also this idea of like, I mean, like it's always about the religion of like the Jedi and the Sith or whatever, where it's like, oh, j- like the, it feels like like Jedi is like a they, there's a very kind of specific narrow uh, uh, definition of Jedi. If like, oh yeah, you follow these things, like you do these certain things, you, like there, you do all these things that makes you a Jedi, and if you only do like half of them, you're technically not a Jedi. So it's like yeah, that, that, that that's basically like the loophole of like you can have these people who have all of the ability of a jedi but aren't like acting like a jedi so it's like they don't technically count right or they so it's like i mean like yeah that, that, that was something i felt like they they kind of yeah they they kind of like dealt with a little bit in last jedi but didn't really go through in rise of skywalker which is kind of the nature of like oh like the teachings of like the there are there are a lot of important teachings about the nature of the jedi and the sith but there are also a lot of like not so important stuff so it's like you kind of feel like like that that slavishness to the jedi name and the jedi code is like that is what was is what held so much of the jedi back and there's kind of this in this sense of oh being more free and being more open to kind of accepting the force and letting the force kind of guide you to what you feel is right i think that's something that like like, like Ash- Ash- ashoka feels like that's like that's kind of like her whole thing is like she's kind of with the jedi she sees the jedi fall she's kind of like the corruption of it 
and all that stuff. And so she feels like disenfranchised. So it's like I'll I'll do like what the full I'll do I'll I'll do what feels right with the Force, no matter if the Jedi says says that's right or not. Right. I think that that, that that's like one of the most in, that I think so. But stuff like that's one of the most interesting part. Or like how you see like Ma- Darth Maul's story in Clone Wars and Rebels is like how he's disenfranchised with the Sith. It's like oh he he has his own goals and ideas, and like I'm only a Sith just for specific reasons but i don't like believe in the sith because it's like it's like the Sith. it's just the weird just the nature of using the using the dark side of the force but it's like he he allowed after the events of phantom menace he allows the dark side of the force to guide him in the direction he feels is best so it's like you can kind of see uh, like the these these two characters are like exploring the nature of the jedi and sith beyond just names and religion right yeah so that the, the, there's plenty of room open for um, things to happen because also at this point and it would have to be an animated series i i don't think they i don't, I don't think unless it, unless it's like 10 unless it's like 10 15 years later and they really like perfect the the cgi uh or technology or they just have someone who's not mark hamill be luke i don't think they're gonna recast especially after doing the cg thing i feel like recasting him will make like they'll just be fan outcry no i mean because at some point it's like if you want more stories with these characters you're gonna have to recast i mean lando or then you don't have or yeah or you have to yeah well again like with with, with you did that like you did you they recast uh, lando and han mm-hmm. and like it were i mean it, it's the same like with obi like with like pe- people right it like, happened people liked you and mcgregor pe- people like and mcgregor so it worked with that right. but then it didn't work with han they like yeah, but they, if... they, they they went and had cgi'd luke because they felt like we don't think we can find somebody who like or, would be good. For- yeah, or or like I said before, it's supposed to be like this is capping it off, so we get to see Mark Hamill one final time as younger Luke at you know the height of being a Jedi Master, running around with his lightsaber. Like you get that bit of fan service, and then the next time you see Luke, they can recast him because we got that one final jolt of Mark Hamill, and like j- j- just because. Um, I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of fans who you know were about Ahsoka Tano being put into live action, and they wanted uh, her name is escaping me. Ashley, Ashley, um, Ashley Witter. No, no, who who played her live action? Oh, Ros- Ros- Rosario Dawson. Yes, there were a lot of people who were like, "Oh man, Rosario Dawson would be the perfect choice," and they chose her. A lot of people have mentioned Sebastian Stan. You know, Bucky. He's part of the Disney family. There's and and like there there's plenty of like photoshops and things where he looks really close. It looks like he could fit the role um, physically, and you know, no one questions whether or not he can act. So e- even if it even if they casted a younger Luke and it wasn't Sebastian Stan, I I could still see them doing it. Not like in a year or two, but at some point down the line. Be, because also, at some point, I want to see a lot, you know, a, a full length live action film on the big screen, another adventure with Luke Han and Leia, and we're not gonna get that unless they recast or CG is insane and we can never tell the difference anymore. See, but the, the, my my thing is that again with with your uh, comparison to like Han and Lando, like the difference is that. Oh, so you got you got Alden Ehrenreich and Dan, and uh, Danny uh, Donald I almost said Danny Glover. Uh-huh. You got Donald Glover, and then they turn into Harrison. Like those are the young versions, and then they eventually become Harrison Ford and Billy D. Williams. Yes. In comparison, you would have Mark Hamill, with who would then become Sebastian Stan, who would then become Mark Hamill. I think that would make people feel a bit more. Uh, disenfran like disenfranchised so to speak just because like there's that where especially yeah, again you put you put that genie like you you put that genie like you pull out that genie of the bottle of the cgi luke and it's like you you can't once you've done that you can't really put it back and i feel like re like putting a recon like yeah like the difference with uh with rosario dawson is like yeah like the character has never appeared in live action so you can kind of get away with recasting her because it's like oh well, she's never actually appeared in live action so it's like oh this is like for the first time, it's like you have a voice, and now you have like the real person. So like there isn't really that there isn't really that that dissonance. Uh, and I feel like the thing of like like if like oh you want like another adventure of Luke Han and Leia on the big screen, mm-hmm. and it's just like I feel like just there's kind of a there, 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 there's a sense of like I don't want to say greed, but it's like 
you don't like it would be something that would be really cool to see but we also don't need it it's like there's there's kind of this thing of like something like there there was like that per, that moment of time of like those characters and i feel like especially again after we already losing uh, carrie losing carrie fisher and then eventually we'll be losing harrison ford and mark hamill at some point though hopefully not anytime soon so it's just the fact that again if it if they if they, all three of them end up dying and they decide to do that that like a movie especially fully see that, that that would just be in like very very bad taste well of I... just kind of like that, that there, there, there's there's a sense of bad taste but it's also a sense of like holding on to the past that's like never letting go of the past of like oh we can only stick with luke han and leia and like like it would be cool like there there are ways to do more stories with them like through comics through novels maybe cartoons and stuff like that but it's like just sticking with like movie being like we need to have movies and like stories of them within these specific time periods even if it doesn't seem completely logical to fit it in it's like oh if we can't do it then maybe you shouldn't and it's just like you do um it's it's about the i feel like about the story and if you feel like you can't you can't find the best way to put in those old stuff then you shouldn't feel like forcing it in and instead go for something new well i i I don't think they would have to force it there's i said there's 30 years between six and seven and there are plenty of key moments yeah that but the issue is is that yeah again like we don't like you you want it you want to have like a story you want to have a movie with them three together but it's again unless you're gonna fully cg them you don't have to cg them you just you can recast them that recasting can, someone isn't can unusual recast, I'm, I'm saying but no, well, well the different I, the, the difference with that is that it's like again, recasting if it's like like again like a prequel of something like that then it's like then people be like oh this is a younger version of the character so we can kind of get away with it but the fact that you have characters playing like yeah like these actors who played the young version and the old version of them to, so, so to suddenly have a different character play them in the middle especially after they passed away i think like that, that that's something that's would be both kind of in bad taste but also feel like you're you're dredging up this well just for the sake of content instead of letting the story be and either like let like you you can tell those stories and like yeah in comics and novels you can have those continue it's like but then we can't have it in a movie it's like well we don't need to have it all in a movie it's like if you if you're unable to do it, whether because of age or whatever, then it's like, well, then then don't tell that story. But the, I mean, there there are plenty of stories that could be told that are important to the overall saga using them, and even you know if at the you know in the future when none of them are around, I don't think it would be in poor taste if you recasted someone. Like, there, there's there's nothing. I, I, I don't think it would be a disservice to their legacy and also I don't think it would be as as jarring necessarily because like because they're the the movies that they're in still like, exist and if, it, if it's Hamill Sebastian Hamill if the story works and the things flow and they they embody that character it's not going to be as jarring as it could be because sure the, the the prequels are oh here's Ewan McGregor he's gonna age into Alec McGuinness or Alec Guinness not McGuinness what am I doing uh, he's not gonna yeah but it, it's still people had to accept a different Obi Wan Kenobi it, it didn't matter that it was a prequel it was still here's a different actor playing that character it, it's just like any long running franchise where they've recasted and recasted like um. I know it's slightly different, but you, you think about something like like a Superman or a Batman or a James Bond, where they've but recasted again, like, multiple those, times. Those are yeah, yeah, but those those are all different iterations of the character. But like, like that, with, that's the main thing. Like they're all their own different continuity. They're all different. Not versions always. Of the character, so you're like with James Bond. Majority. Well, no. Well, yeah. With James Bond. It's they're all, all like, meant, they're all like different versions. Until Daniel Craig, they're all meant to be the same person. And like with Batman, you have. But it's all James. James Bond's also like that. That was like that was in the '60s in a time before like the nature of cinematic universes and stuff like that. And, like even still, all the movies are still kind of meant to be standalone. It's like all of like all of the all of each Bond actor is kind of meant to be like, maybe there will be some things that kind of tie into each other, but for the most part, it's like, Oh, each Bond movie with a different actor is pretty much connected to their own. Like there'll be like, I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, it's like, I mean, that'd be like, you, 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 you can use like Marvel and Spider-Man for instance. I'd like, be like, Oh, like, like, uh, 
Like uh, J.K. Simmons in Far From Home is J. Jonah Jameson, as well as playing uh, Jonah in the Raimi movies. But they're all, it's still different, like, they're still different characters, so to speak. It's just the same, like, name of the character, the same kind of inspiration. While, like, Star Wars is such a, like, everything, like, especially now, it's like everything is connected and everything is important in a certain way. That I think, like, recasting would, like, both, in, in not in just a fan way, but in terms of, like, it just feels like you're holding on, you feel like, I we need to tell, we need to tell a live action story of Luke, so we're going so far as to recast him, even though it feel it would feel kind of very like dis yeah disenfranchised and disaffected from everything, and it just kind of it, it's just that nature of holding on to the past and feel like we can't let go. Like Star Wars is just Star Wars is only Luke and all these. We can't tell any more stories but, of Star Wars. I mean that's that's also saying like be, saying like okay here I am excited about all these different shows that are coming out, and none of them are starring Luke and. I'm excited about Rogue Squadron, which will not have Luke. And then Taika Waititi's movie, I'm sure, won't have Luke. And, like, there will be plenty of movies and TV shows that don't focus on those core characters. Like, the, you know, that focus on Luke, Han, and Leia. What I'm saying is, down the line, I'd like to see it again. I'd like to see them on the big screen again. And that doesn't mean, oh, we can't grow, we can't change, we're holding on to the past. Because at that point, Star Wars will be wide and broad and there will be so many different characters and time periods that we've seen that revisiting them is not going to feel like we've ran out of ideas especially if other things are still happening at the same time it really it depends on the story it depends on the moment those movies are made uh and it like the core of star wars like the 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 foundation of of it is the original is that first movie and to say we'll never put the character of Luke Skywalker on the big screen ever again in a hundred thousand years seems misplaced. I I'm not saying make the movie tomorrow. I'm not saying make that movie in five years. I'm saying at some point I'd like to see it. And what we saw at the end of season two of The Mandalorian, you know, opens that door that there is plenty of story now to tell involving Luke because Grogu was handed off and there's a lot going on there because I don't think the intention there is saying he took Grogu and then he died because Ben Solo went mad like there's so much there and I don't want it to merely be restricted to a book or a comic because people are afraid to see somebody else wearing Luke Skywalker's outfit there's plenty to explore and you know that's just one small aspect because all the other things that are coming and are, are excited to look at they don't involve that core cast from the original trilogy it involves a wide variety of other characters and that will also be interesting i think both can coexist you just have to be careful as to how that story is written and put together and how it's presented and when it's presented like those are the keys but i mean that's just me it, it, it just kind of feels like a, a thing that's like the, 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 it's it feels like too much trouble both like on on the outside and the inside to feel like them I mean, like they to, to want to do it more than otherwise like we're really desperate for money i don't i but, don't think it's just i don't yeah, think it would be know. desperation i think there's 30 years worth of stories involving han luke and leia and at some point i get i I, th I think if you do like an animated version of that i think you could do that and like recast them with different voices because they're, they're, they're because there there's like less distance with animation it's like you you can tell those stories like you can like if you if they made like a, a cg or 2d animated series about luke han leia and all that like all of them in between that time i think it would be per like, people would be perfectly open for it because people are more willing to kind of like laid back when it comes to say like animation versus live action mm -hmm. so it's like like it, it can still be canon but it's like if you have like the characters in their animated forms being voiced differently but it's still like they look like the same characters so they're they, they're more willing to be like okay but it's it's fine that they don't have like the same voices either whether because they couldn't get them or they didn't want to get them it's like there, there's there's less of that while if you're making a live action movie and you're recasting them whether they're alive or dead it feels like a oh well especially since it's like oh it's in this time period but 
they look completely different than these versions and then it's like oh then they're gonna turn like in the old like in the future then they look like they're old actors again but old so it's like they, again it's like just it, it's just the nature of like I, uh... the people like the audiences when they watch the movies and they see like those actors change it's like they're I mean like actors change happen but usually it's because of like outside uh, uh, yeah. situation and and it's like but it's like very in like very like specific situations and uh, it's like there's usually like a reason yeah. and I feel like yeah like Star Wars has been such a like like these characters have been like so connected to like either the likeness or the voice like it's it's the like you can pick one or the other but not both I feel like that I feel like that's how it is I know I, I... it's like you can, you can't change the face you can keep the face but change the voice or you can uh get rid of or yeah you can keep the fit you can keep the face and change the voice but the moment you change the face and the voice i think that's when like people start to lose it a bit i, I don't know i i i, I think yeah, I, I think there's room to to do it i i think it exists i don't i don't think it's as cut as dry as cut and dry because we've we've seen it before we saw it with we saw it with obi-wan we, we've seen it with lando uh i mean what about april o'neill right um she she's in one it's a different actress in two, <laughs> and then it goes back to the original it's actress. All, it's in three. A, but I mean, I mean, TMNT is a different beast than Star Wars. Uh, but it, but I mean, it, it... you you know, it's like Star Wars is such <laughs> a different beast to every single thing. That right. it's like, but I mean, like it's it's even different than like yeah, like even with Marvel, like how some of the actors have been switched. But it's like there there's it's only like a couple of them, and that's like a very like specific situation. Like nowadays, like yeah, they they would never. Re, like they, they, they would never recast uh, any of the, these characters now because everybody's like so inclined so like they're, they're instead just gonna they'll recast like you yeah, know they recast they, they recast like with different characters but they don't recast the characters themselves right. but if you wait 10 15 years I, I i think if if there's room to breathe and it's like well we've come up with a great idea and we're gonna we're gonna run with it that's when the door opens because if 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 they were like John Favreau and Dave Filoni are teaming up 15 years from now and they are writing a, a movie a really great like they have come up with the best idea that features the original characters but they can't use the original cast for obvious reasons i don't think people like i don't think everyone would go up in arms there might be some people who who get nervous who will feel you know be like oh i don't, I don't know if this will work but once it comes out and if it's done well they'll be okay with it I feel like just at that point, it's just, it's so much risk for not like really. It's so much risk for not really taking any but risks. If, I would if say you're... it's like you're you're ri- yeah you're risking like by recasting these character recasting these like super beloved characters who have been around for so many years to tell a story that's like kind of for the most part been done. But if you're Disney and you buy yeah. Star Wars and you go, let's never use Luke Skywalker. Why did you buy Star Wars? Because there's so much more to Star Wars than just Luke Skywalker. Yeah, but I know there's more than just Luke. But what I'm saying is, and it's like we have, we've yeah we've got Luke. We got we, there's so much Luke in the comics in those books. Luke yeah, Luke uh, has but there, Luke has his role in the the sequel trilogy, but, and now he's shown up here. Right, and but there, it's like, there's something how much more there's yeah. something special about seeing Luke, you know, in motion, you know, in a, in a live action thing, and and yeah, he shows up at the end of the Mandalorian. But we have 15 episodes where he's nowhere to be seen, and he shows up at the very end of the. And, and we didn't, and, and we didn't, and we didn't miss him. It's like, it, it, like that's the thing. It's like we weren't spending the whole Mandal, like because that's one. Of, that's another. The, that's one of the things that works so great about the Mandalorian is that you don't feel like you're missing any of this. Like whenever a Star Wars character that you recognize shows up, like it's nice to see them, but it's like you're glad. Like it's not like they they don't take over the series, and you're also not like you you're not wishing that you see them like over your main characters. Yeah, like, but you like you like all these original characters and you want to see more of well, them. Well, of course you want to see more like you want you want to see more new characters and you you want to see you know characters that now exist and can you know have fuller stories but it would be a disservice to just you know if you fast forward 100 years and find out that they've never put luke skywalker in another movie in 100 years that's going to feel sad and wrong i'm not saying put him in everything what i'm saying is at some point it would be nice. And what happens at the end of The Mandalorian opens the door that says there is this whole story involving Luke that we haven't told yet. And I don't want it to be relegated to just a book that 50,000 people might read. 
Like it, it should be more than that because it's important. It it showed that you can tell Star Wars in television. It's what has given Disney the confidence to then create like these little mini cinematic TV universes using Star Wars. The the fact that we're getting, you know, Ahsoka and Rangers to tie into Mandalorian and, and the Boba Fett and like like you you've proven that this all can work, but there is now this this extra story and it shouldn't just be a four issue miniseries. It shouldn't be just a novel things link and connect to it and of course i mean i I know they're going to use luke forever in in comics and books but if it's something special in terms of being presented in a live action show or a movie it's like you, you want that that moment where we get the payoff because there is no payoff in the sequel trilogy for what we've seen in mandalorian involving luke and grogu there's... But also, do, doesn't it feel more special when it's like when a, when like a character or an actor is used sparingly in such a way where it's like it makes like their appearances feel like it, it makes their appearances feel and like their their story impact that we see like on the screen feel more impactful because you know they're like it's very limited and it's like it's very the, this is rare it's so much it's tied so much to the specific actor and stuff so to see like if you like make you make you have much so many more Luke appearances that. That are either completely CG or like recasted, then it kind of feels like it feel it would it it would make them want to dip into that way. Like it would make like it would it make them feel like they would not want to take any more risks. Because like once once that once that again once that genie bottle is open, they'll be like, well, we can use this so much more often, and be like, oh, then we don't have to take any more risks. You don't have to take as many more risks with uh, like newer ideas. Because like oh, we can we can just go through this well because that's an well, easy uh, thing. Like I mean like I mean... like 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 of all like of all the stories, like yeah, like the accolade is like the only only one that's like feels like pretty much mostly original like like every every other original every other series is kind of taking pieces from something else that's existed so there's kind of the thing of like you know like they're they're all like diff like they're dipping their toe in so many different things and it's like oh it's just that oh, that's the only series that like that's doing something completely original with star wars and it's like at, even after all this time and all the different iterations of star wars there's still so many more ideas that you could possibly do with this universe and it's like i think by limiting itself to okay even if it's just yeah, in a in a couple, even if it's just it's that fifteen year thing of like, oh, here's a story of like them. It's it, it just kind of feels like, especially if you need to like, you feel like, oh, we have to do it in live action and we have to recast people or else we can't tell the story. It's the question of, oh, you, you don't like, do you want to tell the story or do you think you need to tell the story because you need to you need to keep these characters alive so that you can keep this brand alive so you can keep making money off of it. Well, I mean, if we want to be crass and all art is just a way to make money, we could do that. But I think there are plenty of yeah, and people. I, and, I, and I'm and I'm a, and I'm the kind of guy who's like I see a lot of people use. I'm the kind of guy who sees a lot of people use that thing of like yeah, like, like oh they just want to do it to make money. And I'm like yeah, because every single studio and company makes these things right. just to make money. But I think there's like if if a filmmaker can if a filmmaker comes up with this idea to do Luke, like do a Luke, Leia and Han movie in live action. And they have like a taste, like, and they have like a tasteful, a tasteful and smart way to do it and a reasoning to do it. Then I'll be into it. But if it's just, we want to make a movie about Luke, Han and Leia, we don't care how we do it. We're just going to do it. Again, it feels more cynical. It's right. like, well, I, like I mean, like the whole solo, like the whole solo thing. the The fact that we were making a Han Solo prequel wasn't interesting at all. Because like, oh, we're recasting Han Solo, doing all that. What was interesting was Phil Lord and Chris Miller were going to tell a Han Solo story. I'm like, that sounds amazing. I want to see it. And then when like that didn't happen, and then the regular Solo came out, and ended up being very kind of like just underwhelming overall so it's like the people's fears ended up being true so it's like do you want to take that risk do you want to take that risk if, or do you like unless you have like unless you have a genuinely good idea but again it's like you if you never know or, or do you want to or you want to take a different a risk of doing a whole new original idea in the star wars universe i i mean and it's like i'd rather i personally would rather see and if you need to do a, a luke like there are so many different way there's so many different avenues of doing luke Han and leia stories without having to worry about like the nature of recasting I, or just like that whole I, I'm, cgi-ness yeah i mean I'm, I'm not saying oh they should do it in a, in a in a cynical view or a dispassionate view if if it was that way yeah i wouldn't be into it but what i'm saying 
I, there are plenty of people who would be passionate and excited working on a movie that has those characters at like if if like i said at 15 years from now favreau and filoni are like we we've worked on something this it involves them it has to be like we feel it would be best done in live action you know uh on the big screen i would have com the complete and total faith in what they're doing even if that means having to recast the original characters so I mean that that's 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 what I'm saying. I'm not saying tomorrow announce a Luke trilogy. I don't want that. What I'm saying is, I do want to see something that follows up and not necessarily be an animated series. I mean, I love animated Star Wars. I want more animated Star Wars, but I also want more live action Star Wars. And I I feel like those characters deserve to be in live action again at some point down the line with the right story with the right people with the right passion that's all that was, yeah that, that, that was kind of that was like one of the re like that, that, that was kind of like the one of the reason i was nervous about luke showing up at the end because it's like yeah like you mentioned that it does now this open up this question of oh luke now has taken uh, grogu to the thing so the question is what's going to happen to him because like we know obviously for sure is that they're not just going to leave like that, 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 that that's not good that that's that that's not how he's going to end like that's not like at right. some point in the mandalorian's future he's going to come back so we're going to have like resolve that eventually so it's the question of how do they resolve like that means luke is probably going to have to come back into the play at some point so the question is how are they going to do that is like yeah do they have like again especially since like within these couple of years mark hamill will still be around so i feel like like they probably like work him in in some way like i know i know you say like oh this will be his last time but he said he's done he said he's done with the joker like five or six times and he keeps coming back so yeah. he'll be he'll keep coming back to luke as long as he's alive and they keep asking him so. yeah. i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't be against a movie that takes place a, a couple of years before the sequel trilogy where he's running around and doing stuff I, I think that, that that could be something there as well and then you wouldn't have to worry about recasting or de-aging or whatever yeah but, i feel like the only way it could work is yeah if they do that and even then i feel like at this point they really want to just like for so like for many many years they want to do standalone movies and not have anything linked right. to skywalker saga like let it be its own thing and right. anything that's connected to it will be through ancillary stuff like the mandalorian yeah i mean maybe <laughs> i guess i guess right, we'll so see overall yeah. yeah so overall star wars is star wars and it'll be keep continuing on until we're dead right star wars will never well, star wars will never die yeah uh and and just like everything but it's like i mean like the the, the thing that is about star wars is that there is like a bajillion different it seems like there's like a limited amount of stories you can tell but there really are a bajillion different types of stories that can tell and it's like i want to see what what the what what are those bajillion and one other right. stories if, that you can tell out of star wars because there's so many there's so many like different angles and potentials that you could take it in like i want i want to see more like now with the, with the high with the high republic i want to see like a, a super pa i want to see the super past and i want to see the super future right. of star wars it's like there's so like the, the, that like just that idea of like you don't need to focus on the character you can just keep making new characters like you you can still have lightsabers and the force and this idea of good force and bad like these good guys and bad guys but you can put new characters into these new situations right i mean if if, if batman can punch joker in the face for 80 years if sherlock holmes can still solve new mysteries you know over a hundred years after his first adventure there, there's always there's always room to tell new stories there can always be jedi there's always be jedi and always be sith right i all right, that was that was a lot. Yes, it was. I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna end up cutting this into multiple videos because damn, this is three and a half hours. Yes, it is. It is long. I knew it was gonna be long because I was like, I just let David talk <laughs> about Star Wars and it'll go on for a while. Oh man, Star Wars. Oh man, I love Star Wars. Have you heard about Star Wars? <laughs> it's this really cool thing. It's got it's got laser swords. 